hope was a restful break and enjoyable holiday. The students are back on campus here at Grand Canyon University, which means the Havocs are back in the house. And tonight, that makes GCU Arena the happiest place on earth. That's right, it's Disney night. As the Lopes continue their whack play, welcoming in the Cougars of Chicago State. And we welcome you into our broadcast here on Eurovue. Thanks so much for joining us for the Lopes pregame show. I'm Kate Longworth. We'll have the rest of our crew on the way in just a bit. But although they were out of town, they were still the talk of the town. The Lopes with an incredible road trip. They It was a hard road trip. They went to New Mexico State and UTRGV, logging a lot of miles in a bus. However, out on the court, they left it all out on the court. That's for sure. Going up against New Mexico State, falling victims to a buzzer beater. And then they bounce back to get the W at UTRGV. An emotional roller coaster it was last week for the Lopes. The loss at New Mexico State, well, they're holding that with them. They want revenge on that one, but they also learned a lot from it. Taste and listen. Honestly, I mean, it was tough. I mean, um... I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I mean, it's hard for me to talk about even right now. Uh, probably the hardest moment of my career so far, and um, it, you know, it's, but it's it, but it's not about how many times you get knocked down; it's how many times you get back up. And so, so I keep reminding myself that uh, you know you just gotta get better every day and continue to improve, so you know uh, things like that don't happen in the future, so that we can really secure secure wins and be you know uh, continue to go where we want to go. Um, it's tough, but you know, in college basketball, you know, you play another game. I think good thing about basketball, so we have to refocus and um, you know, just when, focus on um, going splitting in a road trip. So I think we did that. So we're happy, but we're not content. We um, the New Mexico State game, we played well, but they won the game. So you know, we just got to play better. You feel like you're right there. You feel like you pretty much won the game almost. They, like you're at that moment where emotionally, you think you win the game, and then a second later, someone hits a three-quarter court shot, and it's like you don't even realize it happened. So. Uh, you just have to mentally lock back in and realize that uh, the next game is right around the corner and you have to lock into that one, move past as much as it sucks. Uh, and the boys really did that. You get knocked down, but you get back up again exactly what the Lopes did under Dan Marley while they were on the road. However, it was a heartbreaking loss at New Mexico State, but this team, they learned a lot and they kept up with their rivals already here in the WAC with the Aggies. And then, like we said, they've rebounded and now they are back on their home court. And we are back with you to recall all the action that happened last week and to set you up for tonight's game. And so without further ado, we bring in Barry Butel, Scott Williams, and guys, I think we're still trying to recover from that road trip. But what was good, we were here early watching the team warm up. It's clear they are ready for Chicago State tonight. Yeah, no doubt about it. Coach Marley mentioned it uh, before the uh, before the game tonight. He's excited for the Havocs to be back in the house. The students are back from their break, and they are in the house, and you can hear them already. Yeah, the band is rocking full band. The Havocs the cheerleaders are doing their thing. This is going to be a great band, uh, you know, venue tonight. Well, let's talk a little bit about the last game. 69-65, victorious at UTRGV. Not a uh, not an easy place to win down there in South Texas, and uh, this was no different. They had to really rally late. Had to rally late. Damari Millstead was fantastic down the stretch. Nine of the last 13 points for the Lowe's. I love the fact that they really did a great job defensively. A 10 0 run, come back to get that victory. Pounded them inside with those second chance points, 15 to 2 advantage. You gotta do a better job taking care of the basketball, though. They responded because just two nights earlier in Las Cruces, New Mexico, uh, well, they had a late lead. Great work by Damari Millstead, but then some guy named McCants decided to take it to half court. And yeah, joy and yikes. pain on this road trip for sure. That was oh. one that they thought the Lopes had one first win at New Mexico State, and then this guy <laughs> knocks it in from the midcourt stripe. Just one of those ones that you just you knew it. You, you just have to suck it up and get ready to play, like all the players said the next time you go out on the floor, but. They gave themselves an opportunity. That's what I was so impressed with. Had the lead at the half, just couldn't hold on to it. 23 lead changes in this one. What a great game. Well, for a few years there, it was a very, very tough place to, to win or even come close to winning. And they came ever so close to the Lopes. They lose it by, by two. In the game, though, what a uh, what a big game there for Damari Millsett. He has really shined the last two games. He really has. 
Yeah, I'm very proud of the way this kid has come on. You know, he went from starting to the bench and he got back in the starting rotation, and he has absolutely made the most of his minutes. He does a fantastic job taking care of the basketball. Just four turnovers in his last 65 minutes of action. Talked about the 9 of 13 points he scored down the stretch, but it's a defensive job he did, too. Knocking those balls away, getting those steals, getting those extra possessions for the looks. And he's absolutely on fire right now from the field. 14 of 25 from the floor, including 6 of 10 from behind the arc. Career high 25 against UTRGB on Saturday. Nine of the Lopes final 13 points against the Vaqueros. Big 19 points per game average. Chicago State comes in. Here's a team that first year head coach, they're having some problems. Uh, trying to put some wins together on the court. Yeah, they're not getting the wins. They won three in a row at one point in time during the season, but they've really come up empty ever since. But they fight. They keep going ever hard. They lost two points at home to Chicago, uh, Cal Baptist. So it was a real close game. So the Lowe's are going to have to be ready to play. You cannot take this team lightly. Senior guard Anthony Harris leading the team in points and in rebounds. And Anthony Harris can absolutely do it. He can score. He can rebound. He's ranked fifth in the WAC in scoring. Uh, he had 24. 24 points. So you got to want one of these guys on the floor. He's a slasher. He's a shooter. He does it all. 24 points against Cal Baptist last Saturday for Anthony Harris, the 6'5", senior for Chicago State. That sets it up here tonight. We'll send it back to you, Kate. All right, guys. Well, as we discussed, this team is coming off a very intense road trip. And also, we know Kansas City is just around the corner. They come here on Saturday night. And that'll be a big game. However, Scott, as a player, we know any given night it can go to any any team. That's why you play the game. So how do the Lopes avoid the infamous trap game tonight? It, it, it's human nature to let up and look past a team that's really struggling. Only won two games in the, in the last three years in the Western Athletic Conference and look forward to the 4-0 Kansas City team. But you can't let that happen. Senior leadership, that's what it takes. Coaches can talk all they want to in practice, but it's those seniors that got to get these guys ready to play when they step onto the court. And I think that the seniors, even if they're not in action from Jared Martin, and Matt Jackson, and we know Dan Marley always preaching, the opponent at hand is the one you're focused on. What else does Dan Marley preach to his team? Well, we'll find out right after this. Our very own Barry Patel sits down with Dan Marley, talks about that road trip, and also looks forward to what the Lopes have in store this weekend. Don't go anywhere. The Lopes Free Game Show will be right back. Getting ready to trade it in. What are you doing? Just a little shopping. Wait, a new truck. Don't you think I should be involved? Of course. We'll head over to Sanderson Ford as soon as I'm done. I don't have time today. Hope we're going with four doors this time. Ooh, of course. I know exactly what I want. I mean, we want. A lightning blue Ford F-150 Super Crew with EcoBoost. All done. Shop from home, buy from home, we deliver. From the dealer you can trust, Sanderson Ford. There's an exciting destination for food, fun, and golf in the heart of Phoenix. Come to the GCU Hotel and Canyon 49 Grill, where our hospitality management students gain real-world experience and deliver unmatched service. Enjoy beautiful amenities like a resort-style pool, full-service fitness center, championship golf course, and coffee shop GCBC. Canyon 49 Grill serves American fare all day and happy hour with a great vibe and Lopes pride. Room rates start at $89 per night. Visit gcuhotel.com today. Western Athletic Conference basketball tournament tickets are on sale now. Come support both the men's and women's teams as they try for their first NCAA tournament bids. The tournament is March 13th through the 16th at the Orleans Arena in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. Get your tickets now. Well, the Lopes pregame show continues from GCU Arena on this Thursday evening. Barry Vitell alongside the head coach of the GCU Lopes, Dan Marley. And coach, uh, welcome back home. Thank you. It was a uh, the tale of a couple of different games, but nonetheless, you finish on a positive note as you ride in here tonight against Chicago State. Yeah, kind of, a, I guess, a disappointing uh, trip in the fact that we played really well at New Mexico State, had a chance to win, came back, and uh, made a couple steals, and then uh, got heartbroken by a half-court shot at the buzzer. And uh, proud of our guys uh, to be able to bounce back on Saturday. Always a tough place to play at UTRGV. Struggled the whole game, and... Uh, found a way for the last five minutes to hold them to uh, no baskets made and found a way to win the game. So as you said, it ended in a positive note, but uh, 
Could have been 2 0, could have been an 0 2, so we'll take the split. It has uh, been a different story now. These games against New Mexico State, are, uh, they were went down to the wire, literally down to the tenth of a second. But what a crazy final series of plays with Damari, a couple of steals in 12 seconds, six unanswered points, and then this guy, McCants. Yeah, you know, it was a really good game. It was close. They went up five, we went up five, and we just battled. And, uh, you know, as you said, we did a great job down the stretch, causing some turnovers and been able to get some stops and got a foul and uh, I'd be lying if I didn't tell you I was in shock when that ball went in uh, looked good right from the, when he let it go but you don't expect anybody especially a 6'10 kid who uh, is going to make one from uh, half court but that's basketball and like I said I was proud of our guys we could have uh, kind of stayed in shock and uh, and not fought back and, and got a tough victory on Saturday. How clutch though has Damari Milstead been these last two games in particular? I mean, he leads the team in assists and steals, and he certainly has responded. He continues to get better. I mean, he did a good job last year, but he's a kid that uh, doesn't shy away from big moments, uh, likes taking the tough shots, a uh, really good on-ball defender, and a competitor. And he's been uh, doing a good job of, of leading our guys. And uh, he's going to have to step up, and he's done that. So I'm proud of him. Uh, he's done a better job, I thought, at UTRGV. You know, playing 39 minutes uh, in the past, he would kind of wilted. Uh, because he, he has trouble when he gets tired, but he's kind of pushing through that and he's really developed into a, a really good player. New Mexico State's notoriously for the team been a really tough place to play. That, that obviously isn't the case now. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, last year we were really played really well and lost a close one there. Ali got in foul trouble in the second half and actually fouled out. And uh, this year our guys have a lot of confidence. Uh, you know, we have a goal of winning this league and to do that we have to beat New Mexico State. And I thought we went in there and played well under uh, tough circumstances, but just couldn't uh, finish it. But another step in the right direction. It was good to see Jared Martin, too. He not only just kind of a vocal leader, but he really stepped up in that game. Yeah, that was big for Jared. You know, he struggles a little bit offensively, but he hit some huge threes there, made a great driving layup with his left hand. So uh, we continue to have guys to have to step up. And probably the best thing at New Mexico State is, you know, Ali had a really off game. Trey Dreschel didn't play well at all. We had other guys step up. You've seen. Matt Jackson's do it. You've seen Carlos Johnson. We talked about Damari. Uh, so we have to have to uh, have guys continue to step up, but we also have to find a way for Alessandro and Trey to play better. Yeah, with Ollie specifically, can you talk about the last well, couple of games? Yeah, he's going to be he's going to be the target of every scouting report. Very rarely is he ever going to catch the ball in the post and not get double teamed. So he's got to do a better job of. Uh, controlling the basketball, uh, taking the double team, making the correct play out of that, whether, the, whether that's a score or a pass, he's got to decide that. But I think sometimes with Ali, he tries to get too much contact. Instead of just catching it, using his size, quick move, putting it up on the basket, sometimes he goes down there and tries to bang too much. And the longer you hold it down there, uh, the more people are going to come. So. Uh, I'm not worried about Ali. I, I would like to see him uh, start shooting the ball better. He's really struggled from three as of late, and I think he's now shooting about 29%. And one of his big weapons is if the, we can't get him in the ball inside or he's having a hard time, we can put him out in the perimeter and he can make shots. So he's got to find a way to start shooting the ball a little bit better. Tough break for uh, Matt Jackson, who had been playing really well for you, uh, goes down in practice. Yeah, as a fractured rib, uh, just took a knee to the rib, and uh, hopefully we'll have him uh, for next week's game against Cal Baptist we're going to be kind of conservative we would love to have him back tonight and Saturday against UMKC but I think we should probably uh, err on the side of caution more than anything we want him uh, for the home stretch so uh, he's back uh, working out and hopefully by Monday after this weekend he'll be able to start practicing you sit now three and one in this in this conference and it's it's a tight race but you got to feel pretty good about three and one no uh, well I feel all right I mean you know we've won two games here at home and we split on the road which is always a hard road trip so yeah, you feel good at it, and obviously and, uh, this weekend we want to come away with two wins. We always want to protect our home floor, never want to lose here, and then we'll go to a, a Cal Baptist team that's uh, really good in their first year. So we'll just have to take it game by game, as every team in the WAC does. Uh, I don't care who you're playing. I told those guys uh, this morning, it doesn't matter if you're playing New Mexico State or, or Chicago State. you got to come in and prepare and, and get better and, and go out here and take care of business. Great news is we got the Havocs back uh, yeah, yeah. in sessions, so I know our guards are excited about playing in front of that great crowd. All right, good luck tonight All against right, thank Chicago you. State. Head coach Dan Marley, our guest, stay with us. More of the local pregame show continues from GCU Arena. There's a reason Carlos Johnson wears the number 23. We'll find out when we play this or that when the man they call Los returns after this timeout. When my hot water heater failed, 
she was pregnant, in-laws were coming, a little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers, and we're USAA members for life. USAA. Get your insurance quote today. Do you want to be on Ask GCU? Twitter raffle. Twitter raffle. Tweet us your questions, and the person with the best question is going to get featured on the next episode with the crew. My dudes. What are you doing? <laughs> People don't like us very much, it seems. Yeah, Tweet hashtag Ask GCU to get your question featured. The Havocs are back in the house, but if you weren't able to get out to the game tonight here at GCU Arena, don't worry, you can still be a part of the action by finding us on social media using the hashtag WhoopsUp on both Twitter and Instagram. Right now you see we have tweets scrolling on the bottom of the screen and we'd love for that tweet to be yours so you can be a part of the action, making this the happiest place on earth tonight. That's right, it is Disney night here at GCU Arena as Dan Marley's Lopes gets squared up for Chicago State in town tonight. I'm Kate Longworth. Thanks so much for joining us here on the Lopes pregame show as we continue to count you down to tip off. And uh, a couple players you're very familiar with so far with this season because of how they've been playing out on the court. And that one player that you are talking about Carlos Johnson. He's a man of many layers, and you're probably familiar with what he can do out on the court, the way he loves dunking on the opposition. But off the court, Los has a lot of passions as well. He loves spending time with family and friends. But what, or should I say who, is his true love? Will we find out in this edition of This or That? What's good, everyone? This is Carlos Johnson. This is This or That. <laughs> Steak or chicken? Ooh, steak. Snapchat or Instagram? <laughs> Snapchat. <laughs> Jordan or LeBron? LeBron. Smart friend or funny friend? Smart friend. Dancing or karaoke? Dancing. Coffee or energy drink? Energy drink. Netflix or YouTube? Netflix. Country or hip hop? Hip hop. Steak or Snapchat? St steak. LeBron or a smart friend? LeBron. Dancing or energy drink? Uh, dancing. Netflix or hip hop? Ooh. Hip hop. Steak or LeBron? I guess LeBron. <laughs> Dancing or hip hop? <laughs> hip hop. LeBron or hip hop? I'm such a LeBron fan. LeBron. Gotta love when he had to decide between his next meal, steak, or his favorite player of all time, LeBron. And Carlos has been playing like James as of late. He's a little bit like King James. And the fact that he scored double figures the last five of six games, averaging just over 13 points with over five rebounds a game on last week's road trip. All right, we'll see what King Johnson has in store for us tonight. More Lopes pregame coming your way, and we get the inside scoop with the Lopes insider. Paul Coro sits down with us right after this to talk a little basketball and much, much more. Don't go anywhere. We have been the experts in clean since 1945. We help businesses keep their facilities cleaner, healthier, greener, and safer. We are passionate about what we do and are committed to making your workplace environment the cleanest and healthiest it can be.
armed forces' heroism, courage, and bravery give greater meaning to what it is to be an American. Grand Canyon University honors you and pays tribute to you and your family. As a community, GCU celebrates your service, your sacrifice, and your commitment. God bless all the brave men and women who put our country first. We want to do the same for you. GCU puts you first with its flexible and convenient online degree programs. We salute you and thank you for your service. All right, well, tonight we're counting you yeah. down to tip off with the men's basketball team, but women's basketball team also in action at Chicago State. We'll get more on that coming up, but we want to also remind you that you can come out and root on the GCU women's basketball team when they fight face off against Cal Baptist on January 26th for Faith and Family Night. Just head um, to the website to try and get tickets or come right out here. It's Saturday, 2 p.m. tip off for the whole Cal team. Continuing their strong play, they hope, in the WAC against Cal Baptist again. That's on January 26th. Well, welcome back to the Lopes pregame show. It's the purple pregame party behind us, and a party on our set right now as we bring in Paul Coro, who was with the Lopes on this big road trip. And wow, the play on the court. And also, it was pretty intense travels for you guys. Just take us through what the players went through with that New Mexico State game and UTRGB, the travels between them all, and rebounding also after a heartbreaking loss. Yeah, incredible, wild, emotional swings of the incredible comeback in New Mexico State, where they storm back. Tamara Milstead gets six straight points, and they lead a couple layups and steals within 12 seconds, and then lose on a half-court shot. Dealing with the emotions of that, then they wind up with a flight delay on a connection. They travel for 11 hours on their off day, and then they go into RGV, and they have a battle there where it's back and forth, and they look like they're in a bad situation maybe with five minutes to go, but this team's been in so many of those, they close the game on a 10-0 run and win. Those are the games where you see that hard preseason schedule where you're wondering, oh, it didn't go their way with those close games. It comes to pay off in fruition when they know what to do in those situations. Dan Marley stacking his team for that. And I imagine he was pretty impressed with Milstead's play over the weekend. What did you see from him and how he stepped things up? Pretty amazing. He had nine of the last 13 points in both games. You forget he's just a sophomore he's, and he wasn't starting at the beginning of the season but he's improved his game so much he works hard and he's not afraid of the big moment he he just stepped up in those situations and you, that wasn't a cop up that was Demar Milstead putting pressure on AJ Harrison making him cop up the ball and then to take the risk and know that they needed a foul anywhere anyway there and poke the ball from behind he should have been the hero of that game and then that devastating half court shot but then he did the same thing at RGV and was the one that brought him back down the stretch and hit the game time three yeah did not let him get him down we hope to see some exciting play from him here on the home court as well and it was a big week for Oscar Freyer turning the big 21 you had a great article up and hopefully folks are following you uh, on social media following your articles but take us through what type of player and person Oscar Freyer is and what he means to this team uh, he's one of my favorite guys on the team always upbeat positive uh, real friendly but to the team we've talked time and time again about how he's a 3 D guy and his three-point shot has come around the last 10 games he's hitting 44 percent of them after starting the season slowly and becoming that defensive guy again that we saw last season where he locks down opponents top scorers right and I think too we've been talking about the play of some of these younger guys but in those close games the leadership from some of those seniors and the way they really just know what Dan Marley preaches off the court they carry it on and those uh, you know when they're circling up on the court trying to finish off those games Matt Jackson Jared Martin how much does it hurt when you have those guys and how significant do you feel like their injuries are? Yeah, well, uh, Jared Martin probably will be back tonight. He practiced uh, fully this week. Matt Jackson, you know, he was so important when they played, uh, when he started for those five straight games. Their defense turned around, and they were only giving up 39% shooting. And they really missed him at New Mexico State. The Aggies shot 50% there, got a lot of points in the paint. That wouldn't have happened with Matt Jackson there. He might miss this week. It's, you know, they get a break next week with only one game, so he gets a lot of time to recover from that rib injury. But Jared Martin looks like he'll be back. He, I think his uh, coaching stint lasted one game. He looked like a, a coach at UTRGB. I think right. he was the one that encouraged Carlos Johnson to <laughs> take that game-winning three. That's awesome. And I think I'm gonna. I'm just gonna put it out there. I think next January we're gonna be talking about a kid, Mikey Dixon. He's of course a transfer student here. He'll be eligible to play 
one year from now, what can Lopez fans look forward to and what does he bring to the table? Well, it's, it's the, the dynamics of the team are going to look different next year. This guy's a small, quick scorer. He's a, he was the rookie of the year in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference when he was a freshman. He was on the number 24 team in the nation at St. John's. They were 13 and one when he was there. And he was a key reserve. Since he left, they've gone two and two. They've already lost more games since he's left than they did the whole time he was there. And he's uh, he was able. He put himself in the NCAA transfer portal. GCU stepped in. He made a visit during the Utah Valley Seattle homestand and made a committed on the spot when Wichita State and some other schools were interested. And he's already been practicing with the team this week. And you start to look at next year when Isaiah Brown, who's sitting out as a Northwestern transfer, lots of little guards, Javon Blackshear, the Shadow Mountain High School right. star locally in Phoenix, lots of quickness in the backcourt next year. Well, from the Lopes newest member in Dixon to the Wax newest member in Dixon State, yeah. of course, there'll be a new team next year to Wax play. Yeah, another team that's making the Division I tr transition, one of the fastest growing areas of Utah there, or the nation actually. And they're really committed to, D to athletics, and that's what the WAC liked about them. They have a, an arena that looks a little bit like this, except it's red. <laughs> and uh, it'll be a natural partner with Utah Valley when people are transferring. But GCU is familiar with them when back in the Pac West days, they were both in the same conference. Looking forward to it, and already the WAC is looking very interesting. It's going to be a tight race from beginning to end. We'll be breaking it down when we come back. More on the Lopes pregame show as we take a quick trip around the WAC. Meanwhile, the party is happening right now at GCU Arena. We'll be back. You watch Ask GCU, where we answer your questions every week. And the points don't matter. Wait, what? Tune in every week for answers to be questioned. Where we answer your questions in a common, pro in a, all right. common professional Please manner. Sure. <laughs> Tweet hashtag Ask GCU to get your question featured. RGV at Utah Valley with an 8 p.m. or 7 p.m. tip-off rather with an 8 p.m. tip-off is New Mexico State at Seattle University. Meanwhile, Nicole Powell slopes down right now by 7, 24-17 the score and uh, we'll keep checking in on that action to see how they fare and we have plenty more coming your way as we continue to count you down to tip-off at Chicago State at GCU. We've got all the action coming your way in just moments. Grab those snacks and get ready. Credit Union serving the Valley for over 65 years can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, MLS number 410376. purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu.
from the heart and soul of Phoenix, welcome to the campus of Grand Canyon University and inside GCU Arena, where tonight the Lopes play host to the Chicago State Cougars. Good evening and welcome to GCU Basketball. Alongside three-time NBA champion Scott Williams, I'm Barry Butel. Kate Longworth will be along in just a moment. Well, the Lopes are riding high after a big 69-65 win at UTRGV to improve their mark in the conference to 3-1. Yeah, they're doing a really nice job. Got out the start. Great start. You know, tough games against Seattle uh, in, in, this, in this arena, Utah Valley. Go on the road, lose a heartbreaker um, at New Mexico State, and then come back, bounce back, come from behind, 10-0 run down the stretch. Damari Milstead was absolutely fantastic. No doubt. Michael Finke big in the game as well, but Milstead, how about a career-high 25 in the game? He was absolutely on fire. His last two basketball games on the road, really concentration locking in, 12 of 24, uh, excuse me, 12 of 25 from the field, 6 of 10 from behind the yard, taking care of the basketball uh, in over 65 minutes, just four turnovers. 19 points per game over the last two games. It's nine of the Lopes' final 13 points against the Vaqueros. Now, Chicago State comes in. They're 0-2 in the Western Athletic Conference here early on, but they are led in scoring and rebounding by their senior guard, Anthony Harris. Harris is absolutely a fantastic player. Plays hard from start to finish. Can shoot the ball from the outside. Can slash to the basket. Rebounds the basketball at six a game. He's fifth in the whack in scoring. This one... Should be in the win column for the Lopes. The uh, Cougars struggling out of the uh, gates here, but every game in the Western Athletic Conference has been tough here early on, uh, as uh, we have seen at the uh, final buzzer, even in Las Cruces. It's time to get things started. Let's send it down to our public address announcer, Paul Denuser, with our prayer and our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to the beautiful GCU Arena for Disney Night. And tonight's Western Athletic Conference men's basketball matchup between the Cougars of Chicago State University. And yo, Grand Canyon University and Lopes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you all please rise. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with a word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is given by campus pastor and dean of students, Dr. Tim Griffin. Let's pray together. God, thank you that we get to be here tonight. Thank you for these athletes and coaches and officials. We pray that you would keep them safe during this game. Lord, we thank you for these incredible fans that have come out tonight, especially our students. May you bless them. Give us a great time together in this game, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Griffin. Fans, please remain standing as you now honor America with the singing of the national anthem. The Star Spangled Banner will be performed this evening by the Cantable Honors Chorale from Horizon Honors High School, directed by Chris Granger. Thank you, Cantable Honors Corral. Great job by the Cantable Honors Corral and Pastor Tim Griffin with tonight's prayer. Chicago State comes in 3-14, their first 
year head coach is Lance Irvin. His assistants are Odell Davis and Brett Putz. Here is Coach Irvin's starting five. Brought to you by Dignity Health, Rob Shaw, the WAC assist leader, Trayvon Bell, Anthony Harris, Christian Jacob, and Cameron Bowles. Yeah, we're going to keep eye on the big fella, Christian Jacob, 6'8", 230-pound forward. He was absolutely on fire against Cal Baptist. He had 20 points and pulled down four Rodmans. Starting lineups brought to you by Dignity Health. Hello, human kindness. There you see Coach Lance Irvin, first season Chicago native, hired in August. Time now, though, to introduce you to GCU. Lopez, are you ready? Starting five, brought to you by Dignity Hell, Trey Drexel, Damari Milstead, Oscar Freyer, Michael Finke, and Alessandro Labor. Ali Ali Oxen, free, free, free. Got to get Labor going. He has had uh, average six points on that last road trip, that icy road trip. Four of 19 from the field shooting. The, the uh, focus in practice was to feed the big man. Let's see if Labor will eat tonight. Dan Marley in his sixth season as head coach. The associate head coach is Lewis Wilson. The assistants are Chris Prevalone and T.J. Benson. The director of basketball operations is Jesse Parker. The special assistant to the head coach is Johnny Hill. The video coordinator is Matt Lopez. The graduate associate assistant rather is Dylan Hildalgo. Director of sports medicine, Jordy Hackett. And the director of sports performance is Gabe Borland. 25 points for that man against UTRGV, Damari Milstead, as we mentioned, averaging 19 points per game the last two games. Martin and Johnson in the middle. Mikey. Time now to take a look at the Sanderson Ford keys to the game. The best play on a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. Well, you know, it's Disney theme night tonight, so I had to go yeah. with the top 10 all-time Disney characters. Oh. So coming in at number 10, Captain Jack Sparrow. That's right. It's a pirate's life tonight. Arr. Coaches always say value the ball. Treat it like it's gold. So be a pirate. Take their gold away. Overplay the passing lanes. Double team the post ups and create steals and turnovers. Coming in at number six, Tinker Bell. Oh. You got to really tinker with stuff. You're trying to repair stuff. They got to try to repair their inside attack with Jackson without with broken ribs. Someone needs to provide that inside punch. Get labor going and make in that magic pixie dust fairy. That never hurts. <laughs> all right. Hey, coming in at number one, Disney character all time. We have him a guess. Oh, come on. It's, That's right. Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Not, tonight is the definition of a trap game. Do not Mickey Mouse around with this team oh, and take them lightly. Their 3 and 14 record is not indicative of how they play. They play hard. They had a two point loss at Cal Baptist. They will be ready tonight. We are underway. That was strong on the three keys. Mark Beasley, Kirby Sitton, and Charles Ridzak are the officials. Look who's alone. Rexel, but he's fouled. Well, they almost lost that basketball out there at the three-point line. He went down and scrapped it out in the overplay. The guy left Drexel. They were able to get the ball to Drexel, and he drives to the basket. Look at it. Number three comes running out there trying to steal that basketball. And Milstead somehow finds a way to get it over to Drexel. He gets fouled as he goes to the hoop. That's what I want to see. I want a lot of jerseys tonight going to the hoop. Drexel doesn't commit. Connect, rather, on the uh, Brian. Hopes fans will wait till that happens to take a seat. Practice on Tuesday, they really talked about overplaying the basketball, double teaming out of the perimeter, and double teaming the post. Let's see if they're trying to get some of that early tonight. Shaw. 
Tries to move inside. Cameron Bowles stops, pops, and drops it. Oh, nice start right there. Went for a little motion offense. Got GCU kind of mesmerized with all that player movement and ball movement. Found himself a nice little 16 foot jumper off the right wing. Milstead. Bounce pass in tight to Labor, and he can't come up with it. Cougs are clawing that basketball. Ooh, look at Chicago State. When I talked with Matt Jackson. I said, you talked with these guys and tell them won't be looking past them to look towards Kansas City. That 4-0 record, he said he hadn't spoken to them. He said, they'll be ready, so we'll see. Michael Finke inside, Labor off the glass. Yeah, they're trying to feed that big inside twice now. Back to back trips going inside the labor. Beautiful entry pass. Threw it away from the defense, only where labor could get it and lay it in without him putting the ball on the floor. Bulls near side. Harris, their leading scorer. Back out top. Jacob down low. Beautiful move there by Anthony Harris. Uh, Harris, boy, I'll tell you what, moves good without that basketball. Took his time, knocked it down. Chicago State off to a great start, scoring on the first three possessions. Freyer back to Drexel. Drexel now to Milstead. Milstead moves left. Oh, got a bit of a hand on it. Floater doesn't go. Here come the Cougars. Down low, working on Finky, big right hand, doesn't go. Yeah, he's not going to allow Harris to get that low post position. You've got to stand him up closer to the free throw line, guide him out away from the basket. All alone, Labor for three. Ooh, hey, heavy. But the rebound is picked up. Hoop and a hard against Dre Drexel. Well, that's where the Lopes can do some damage on that offensive blast. This is the smallest Chicago State team. So rebounding on the offensive board could be huge for the Lopes tonight. They should have a, a huge advantage, plus eight, plus ten on the offensive glass tonight before it's all said and done. Nice job by Drexel. He's just a scrappy little ball player. Trayvon Bell picking up his first. Drexel's numbers against Seattle. We are tied at six. Shaw. Senior guard from Louisville, Kentucky. Long distance three. In and out, pulled down by Michael Finke. First stop for GC. Let's see if they can get something in their transition offense. Milstead open. Not there, and Michael Finke can't put it on with a foul call. Yeah, they wiped out <laughs> Milstead as he was going hard to the hole. Took him out underneath. With this job of Finky following his man to the basket, that's what he's taught to do. Go right to the front of the rim, and if that wouldn't have been a foul, he would have had an opportunity to slam that one home. Jacob picked up his second. Their leading rebounder. Yeah, that's bad news for Chicago State. Unfortunately, they're going to have to get him out of the basketball game. 17 minutes, 12 seconds to go. He's already picked up his second foul. Patrick Spear comes in. Milstead hit one or two that time. It's some of the best shooters here, Milstead and Drexel, when it'll connect on both free throws. Look at that ball pressure by Milstead. Shaw. Bell. Baseline. Loader not there. Comes off. Michael Finke. Good job by Finke. Boxing his guy out, then going hard to crash the glass and attacking at its apex. Down low to Labor. He swarmed, kicked back out. Ooh, a little bit of a hand on it, but he got to Freyer. Bounce pass, Labor. Spear playing him tight. Muscles his way. Travel on Labor. Labor wants to push, but he's not going to get it. Threw himself a little off balance with that spin move as the defender tried to come over and take a swipe at that basketball. I think it just lost his balance as he was trying to back into the defender and took an extra step. Shaw. Quick move, draws Milstead. Yeah, Milstead anticipated Shaw going to call for that screen, but he went away from the screen, and Milstead had to reach out and grab him, or he was going to go right to the basket. Bowles leaves to Shaw. Bounce pass, turnaround by Harris. Short. 
Havich let him know it was, but he almost picked it off. It's a little sloppy on the outlet there, trying to get it to Freyer was Drexel. Yeah, he could push that ball up with the drizzle, uh, the dribble. Uh, Drexel was trying to throw that thing ahead, but this is a long Chicago State team. They might be short, but the players that they have out there, they're long as they go into a little zone defense here, trying to protect against foul. Waver up to Michael Finke. Turn around, short. I think down Finke by Bull. lost that on yeah. the way up. It looked like it squirted out of his hands just enough to throw his shot off. Shaw turned the basketball over, trying to go to the basket, commits the tra traveling ball. Just one more time, just turning that basketball over, and officials gonna get that every time. Let's send it down courtside, Kate Longworth. All right, guys, well, we're just a couple weeks in, and already we're seeing how fierce the competition is here in the WAC. And only more competition is on the horizon for this conference. Making the move to the WAC in 2020 will be Dixie State. Dixie State University, it was just announced this week, will be the newest member of the Western Athletic Conference. Effective July 1st, 2020. This is contingent on Dixie State completing the reclassification process from NCAA Division II to Division I. The Trailblazers currently play in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. They won last season men's basketball championship. And before that, they played in the Pac West Conference. Dixie State is located in St. George, Utah. They will become the ninth member of the conference when they join. And St. George, Utah, if you're not sure where it is on the map, we'll take a look right here. But right now, it's one of the fastest growing cities so it's going to be very exciting and I did talk with our Lopes insider Paul Coro who's been doing a lot of digging on Dixie State to see what competition the Lopes will have in the years to come and he was telling me that the arena a lot like this although instead of purple you'll see a lot of red but he's had a very intimate atmosphere where they bring the crowd and they really have that six-man advantage so it should be fun down the line but right now guys I, I mean it's a nail-biter currently in the whack for sure yeah there's a history there Past history, GCU and Dixie State. Dramatic finishes. Yeah, the lap just gets tougher and tougher. We talked about it a, a couple games ago and how they're ranked right in the middle of a pack of all the conferences in the nation. So, you know, adding Dixie State, they can bring it like the other teams have brought it and proved their games over the years. It's going to be tough to get a win on the road anytime you go on the road. Look at Cal Baptist, they shocked New Mexico State. At home, absolutely. I mean, Kansas City. Everyone was talking about Utah Valley, Seattle, and GCU, and Kansas City's off to four and zero start. Yeah. Here's Saturday night. They're at Bakersfield tonight. Drexel, Labor, kick back out. Milstead for three, off the mark. That's the one he can hit, though. Eh? Ball goes inside to the big. He the man's going to leave on the double team because they don't want Labor to get loose underneath. Milstead's just going to have the conference to knock it down like he did on the road where he was 6 of 10 from behind the arc in those two basketball games. Harris over to Shaw. Spear comes out, tries to help free him up. Shaw loses it a bit. Back out, swarmed by the Lopes. Three on the shot clock. Spear, careful, turn around, doesn't go. That offense never really got started that time. They got a little penetration, but once they lost the ball, it got disjointed after that. The Cougars were off to a hot start, three for three, but since are 0 for five. Well, this team does generally have a tough time scoring the basketball. Cougs scored just 65.9 points per game. That's last in the Western Athletic Conference. The problem is they give up 85.9 points per game, and that's last in the Western Athletic Conference. So if they don't get their offense going, they have a tough time winning. Carlos Johnson in. For Drexel. Looks off to a bit of a slow start. Harris underneath. Nice job getting that position there on Carlos Johnson. Johnson a little slow warming up, and Harris took advantage of the fresh heat off the bench. Prayer labor, labor over to Milstead, moving around the arc they go. Johnson comes back out on top. Looking right, now left, Milstead. 10 on the shot clock. Freyer, he looks for three. Give it to him. You know, I was watching Freyer warm up for the game, but not that basket, the opposite basket. He knocked down nine straight three-pointers from just about that area. Practice pays off. 
Amazing how that happens. Martin at the scorer's table. Bowles. Just inside the arc. Off the mark. Easy rebound. Carlos Johnson. This is where Carlos is dangerous in that open court. Bounce pass. Michael Finke. Burning back out. Labor for three. No. Rebound. Michael Finke. Great job by Finke getting on that glass. I'm not sure if they're going to call a jump ball or a foul. Like a foul. Yeah, I got a foul underneath there. Look at look at Finke. He just keeps moving, keeps moving. That extra bounce off the rim gave him the advantage versus the guys underneath, and he got tossed to the corner, but he got one back for his team. Noah Biziramwami with the personal foul. Inside, Finky a little bit of heat on that pass from Martin. He swarmed by three, and he puts it in. He will not be denied. He said, I worked hard for that offensive basket. Ball, and then I'm going to go over here to that right block, post up from the left shoulder turn, and throw it in over the top of the defender. Shaw just throws up the left hand, doesn't go. Milstead on the glass. Cougars shooting cold. Milstead, hey, look at that. Coast to coast, Damari Milstead. How about that? Does a good job on the defense, gets the board, then goes all the way coast to coast. Look at Finky one more time. He had to handle a bull of a pass by Martin, and once he gets his footing, he throws it in. I love this one by Milstead. The defense doesn't stop you, just keep on attacking. Speed chill. 7 0 run over the last minute, 17 for the Lopes. Bowls in. The busy Ramwami. I, di I just really appreciate what Damari Milstead's done. Kind of relegated there off the top of the season. Kept his head up, pounded away. Yeah, and he's lighting it up right now. Very impressive by well, this is just a second year player. He expected to get the keys to the bus after the departures of the uh, uh, seniors, but Trey Drexel came in and outplayed him in training camp, but he didn't hang his head. Freyer short. Rebound. Here come the Cougars. Lost it. Oh, pick it up. Michael Johnson. Freyer got a hand in there. Over and back. Freyer, that pressure defense 45 feet away from the hoop. That's what Coach Marley was screaming at his guys on Tuesday. Be aggressive. Get after the basketball. He just switched that one right there. Not ready for it. And just jump on it and cause the turnover. Bowles wasn't ready for that switch. Whoops. On a 12-2 run over the last five minutes. Putting an 8-0 run. Tim Finke in. Roberts Blumberg's in the game. Johnson. Hide by Bowles. Martin open for three. Oh, look at that! Now Martin was hot on the road at New Mexico State, knocking down shots from all over the field. But give Blumberg's a lot of credit. That hard roll to the basket sucked the defender that's supposed to be guarding Martin to the basket, left him wide open to get his feet set and his shoulders square. 15-2 run for GCU. Go back to this one more time. See that hard roll by Blumbrooks calling for the basketball? Nobody within 12 feet of Martin when he catches that ball. Plenty of time to eye the basket and knock it down. A couple feet from behind that line, too. Wow. That's Steph Curry range. He had a bad ankle. Uh, wasn't able to play at UTRGV, but boy, he looked good in practice on Tuesday, showing no effects of it early here tonight. All right, we'll step aside, take a timeout. 12.06, 18 day GCU on top. Forces heroism, courage, and bravery give greater meaning to what it is to be an American. 
Grand Canyon University honors you and pays tribute to you and your family. As a community, GCU celebrates your service, your sacrifice, and your commitment. God bless all the brave men and women who put our country first. We want to do the same for you. GCU puts you first with its flexible and convenient online degree programs. We salute you and thank you for your service. Tonight's GCU men's basketball game on your view and GCU.tv is brought to you by Dignity Health. Hello, human kindness. By Sanderson Ford. The best play on a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. And by BSN Sports, the largest provider of team sports equipment and apparel in the country. Barry Vitell, Scott Williams, Kate Longworth here from Phoenix, Arizona, GCU Arena. And that couldn't get any cuter. <laughs> Those headphones are needed in here. It gets a little loud in here, Scott. I'm not sure if you're aware of that or not. Yeah, I, I am quite aware of that as I go home with my ears ringing on most nights. And, uh, Beth was holding up her little, uh, what is it, a decibel yeah. reader? Yeah. That thing was popping up over 80 and 90 during the uh, pregame purple party. Or the, was it purple pregame party? That's how These I. These kids like their loud music. Yes, they do. They get after it in here. This is a great venue. I think it's the best venue oh, yeah. in uh, all of Phoenix. Disney night. We saw some good ones there down uh, when we were down courtside. Nice, yeah, nice work by some of the fans. Yeah, one of the Toy Story we saw uh, down there. Gal, two gals actually uh, put something where they the dog. One was the head, one was yeah, the tail. The they had a dog slinky between Toy them. Story. I yeah, thought that, that was, was probably the most creative that took I've some seen. More. Yeah, and uh, saw uh, some Goofies. I saw Minnie Mouse. I saw Snow White. So wow. they've come strong. Who doesn't love Disney? Fear. Far side. Anthony Harris. Lumber tying him. Working down to Spear. Spear trying to move on Martin. Off the glass, not there. Rebound. Trey Drexel. Uh, who else? Trey Drexel. Four rebounds out. Three on the defensive end, one on the offensive end. Martin leaves for Tim Finke, peels back right, kicks back out, Martin. Johnson, Drexel, Finke, into Blumberg, 10 on the shot clock, Martin. Bounce pass, Finke, oh, got picked off. Well, Finke cut behind the defender, you gotta cut in front of the defender against that zone. Blumberg, leaves for Drexel. In the corner, Johnson. Johnson comes back out. Martin quickly over into the corner. Tim Finke! Folks are hot from behind that arc tonight. Knocking a couple down here early on. I love that ball rotation from side to side. Catch that zone defense trying to scramble to recover and get a clean look. 18-2 run. Strickland. Martin tried to get over there and do a one of his uh, 42 specials and take a charge, but he wasn't quite able to get there in time. But look at the rotation of this ball. All the way from the right corner over to the left corner. No way the defense can move as fast as a pass from a basketball. Well, Sean Strickland, 70% free throw shooter. Kibosh out of there, boss. That one was halfway down before it oh, bad. He's from back Minneapolis. Up. Hometown kid, huh? Yeah. Minnetonka Skippers. It's a nice lake there in Minnetonka. I don't know if you ever heard of that. I, I have never spent much time up really? there. The only really? time I've ever been to the Vacation capital state of, of Minnesota was in the winter, and I said, hey, Whoa, hey, not hey, a good going choice. Back. Not going no, back, baby. No, the lake's pretty frozen. Blumberg's looking for three. Oh, Roberts, Blumberg's, hello. I 
think Coach Marley loves that one. He was absolutely fantastic in practice on Tuesday when I came down to check him out. Best uh, performance I had seen out of Blumberg's in quite some time. It's nice to see that his work is paying over here tonight. 16% coming in, just three of 19 from the arc for Blumberg's. Great to see as the Cougars get on the board. Yeah, Shaw, what a nice floater over the top of Blumberg's. If he didn't throw that thing up towards the top of the backboard, Blumberg's would have thrown it back in his face. That ended a 21-2 run. Drexel gathers it back up. Johnson, glass and in. He's just too strong when he goes to the rack. I mean, he's like a little mini LeBron James absorbing that contact, oh. using the glass to soften his shot. He loves LeBron. Driving Shaw. Nice bucket. Shaw with back-to-back -back hoops right now. He didn't want to let him get hot. He can keep this uh, Cougars team around. Johnson motioning up high. Oh, my. That didn't work out very well now, did it? That's what you got to gotta guard against. Now, you run out to a 14-point advantage. Everyone's you know getting shots getting buckets. Don't get sloppy with the basketball. You keep pounding them with the easy one singles and doubles. You don't need that home run alley-oop right now. Harris. Back out Jacob Jacob Shaw Shaw hide by Johnson Swarmley. Stepped out. Yeah, that's that pressure defense. They had two guys Two offensive players with the ball. GCU will trap every time. Make that offensive player feel the pressure and have to do something really crafty with the basketball. And once they get him against that sideline, that acts like a third defender and steps out of bounds. Drexel backs up left. Johnson. Down low, Martin. Johnson takes it back. Moves right. Tim Finke. Nice move to his left. Leaves it there for Blumbers. But good defense. Looks like Harris came over. Yeah, I thought Blumberg's went hard enough to the hole there to warn a, a call, but he didn't get it. But he didn't hang his head. He got back on defense quickly. Labor and Milstead making their way over to the scorer's table. Nice feed. Down low. Doesn't go. Loose ball. Martin picked it up. Oh, careful. Jacob. Looks like Martin wins 60 of the 60% of the 50-50 balls, doesn't it? He just yeah. goes in there and puts his chin in there and scraps it out somehow. Drexel, quick turnaround, heavy rebound pulled down by Cameron Bull. Rob Shaw leaves it for Harris. Harris from three-point land, big rebound. Drexel on the run. All committed. That's going to be the seventh, seventh team foul, so the Lopes are going to go to the line here and shoot a couple of three. Time out of the court, 7.50, 26-12 is the score. A big run there by GCU in the game at one point. It was 21-2. to two. They really opened it up as they both tried to uh, kind of break out of a little bit of a cold Flurry there off the top, but man, they opened it up to the Lopes. They busted it out in a big way. They did it with the defense. They got the stops. They got on the offensive glass. Then they got that stop. They pushed it down the floor before that uh, Cougar defense could set itself. They found themselves off balance most of this first half. 11-0 bench run, uh, bench scoring as well. I love that one uh, from the outset by Frere. This was just a hard working bucket inside by Fingy. The Milstead here, no one stops the ball. He just keeps on going to the rack. That was that swing, swing over to uh, Martin, and then another one over to Little Pinky. And I like this one by Blumberg. So happy for that kid. He hasn't seen a lot of playing time with Pat Jackson out. He's going to get some burn tonight. He's working hard in practice, and he's making a payoff in the game. From BSN Sports upcoming schedule for GCU. You take a look. Track and field getting underway. Air Force Team Challenge. Women's tennis, men's tennis, women's basketball at KC on Saturday. Men's volleyball in action as more sports are getting underway here at GCU. Come out and support them here on the campus in Phoenix. Men's volleyball taking on LMU. And men's tennis down 
in Tucson on January 20th. That's a look at your BSN Sports upcoming schedule. All nine GCU players have scored. It's 26 to 12 over Chicago State on this Disney night. You get nine different players scoring at basketball all in the first half. It's going to be really tough for Coach Irvin to figure out where the offense is coming from. It, all hands on deck. You got to try to stop these guys. And how about Drexel tonight? He's going back to the line to shoot the front end of one and one, but he's already got himself six boards and four points. Two or four from the free throw line here in the opening half. Shaw hide by Drexel. He's near side. Harris up high. Drexel was there. Loose ball. And out. Good hustle by Shaw. Yeah, Shaw is trying to hustle for it. I like that. They, they they stole a play out of the GCU book here coming out of the timeout. They tried the high hand off there and for the alley-oop dunk. Just weren't able to complete it. It was Trey Drexel that went in there and scrummed that ball along the baseline. Somehow he got it over uh, to, to Carlos Johnson. And then there was a player just stepped out of bounds with it. Labor swarmed. Urban wants their hands up and they do so. Milstead. Shaw tight on him. All kind of pressure on Milstead. Don't want to let him get going. They've seen his numbers the last Ooh. couple of games. Milstead. Tim Finke, bounce pass, Laver. Turnaround, quick shot. Knew the shot clock was close to expiring. Good work by the Cougars on D. Strickland to Shaw. Shaw, eyed by Martin. Stop and go. Up high, not there. Picks up the rebound. Good work by Shaw. Yeah, he stayed with it. He took the attack to Biggs underneath. Fortunately, two GCU players fought each other for the basketball, and they knocked each other off the play, and Shaw was still scrapping. He got the ball, put it back in. Shaw came to play tonight. Michael Finke and Freyer at the scorer's table. Johnson. Martin quickly labor muscles not there foul great interior passing that time big to big if you want to call Mark, uh, Martin the big out there with that with that smaller bunch but see how the ball just doesn't stick in his hands he gets it and turns it right around to the big fella underneath labor who takes it hard to the hole you said he muscles he trucked his way right to that basket Freyer in for Martin. Laver at the line. Johnson with the rebound. Oh, he traveled. Oh. He wanted to go up when the ball was still spinning in his fingertips. Yeah. He lost control of it. And Got called for the hippity hop underneath. Nice job going after and getting that offensive board to begin with. So, really, I guess it's a wash. Bounce pass inside. Trying to turn Jacob. Right hand, not going to fall, but the rebound put back by Delshawn Strickland. Now that'll drive Coach Marley batty because back to back buckets now come off of second chance points, and the Lopes should have a huge advantage on the glass. 356 in county, no field goals for GCU. Tim Finke puts a stop to that. Well, Tim Finke has come to play tonight. He realized this is an opportunity to get some big numbers against this struggling Chicago State team. Ooh, Shaw. Long distance. 21%. Yeah, it was a, I think he had his foot on the line. They're going to give him two pointer. At, uh, but he's four or six from the field now. He's got eight points. Milstead, the stutter right over to his left hand and off the window. Milstead sees an opportunity that he doesn't think any of these Cougars can stay in front of him with a live dribble. He's just putting his head down and going to the bucket. Jacob working on Michael Finke. Tim Finke comes over for support off of the window, though. 
as Trayvon Bell puts it home. Yeah, Shaw, Bell, all these guys are going inside for buckets. You got to choke off the interior defense. Can't give up easy points underneath. They should be pulling away, and G and uh, Coons are staying around because they're going inside getting points in the paint. Millstead. Picked off by Jacob on the rebound. Shaw loses it. Oh, and so does Tim Finke. Over in the corner, Trayvon Bell. Not going to happen. Three-point shooting is not really their forte. They really struggle from behind the arc. They got to get something going to the basket. I'm a little surprised Bell shot that one as quick as he did off of that turnover. They're just 0 for 4 from behind the arc right now. Elstead loses it. They're letting them play. A couple yeah. times now, guys got that bucket. And Laver and Blumberg's and that time, it was... Uh, DeMar Milstead, they're not getting Oops. any calls. That was an air ball. Strickland not there, but the rebound put back by Jacob. Timeout on the court. Lopes up by 10 now. 32-22 over Chicago State. Lopes trying to improve to 4-1 and one in the Western Athletic Conference with the first of back-to-back -back games here on their home court. Just four minutes to go here on Disney night at GCU Arena as we wind down time in the first half. I just want to invite you to be our guest. Let it go. In the circle of life, all you need are the bare necessities because when you wish upon a star, you will see it's a small world after all. You see where I'm going with this? That's right. It is Disney night. So who doesn't want to talk about the happiest place on earth, which right now is right here inside GCU Arena. And the king of the court here is of course Dan Marley. And when asked who his favorite Disney character is, he said Mufasa from The Lion King. Meanwhile, a couple of his players were picking Mickey, including birthday boy Oscar Freyer. Carlos Johnson said Goofy was his favorite player and then laughed. I think it's pretty obvious, he said, because I'm Goofy. Meanwhile, you couldn't script it any better. I spoke with both of the Aussies players separately, and I asked them who they would pick, and, well, it's clear they will always have a friend in each other. That's right. That is the theme song from Toy Story. And Matt Jackson said his favorite all-time character is Buddy from Toy Story. And then 10 minutes later, when I ran into Jared Martin, asked him, mind you guys, he did not hear his buddy Matt Jackson's answer, but he said Buzz Lightyear. It's oh. like they were always meant to be. Oh, that's so sweet. So what about you guys? Your perfect so partnership. Who are your guys' uh, Disney Peter characters? Peter Pan for you or what? Well, yeah, you know, I, I was a big Winnie the Pooh fan, Piglet, oh. Christopher Robin, but my favorite was Tigger. Tigger. I Tigger. I loved his energy. How about you, Kate? I'm going to go with Mrs. Incredible. The mom from The Incredibles. And the second one, she's even a working mom, but she has these incredible superpowers. And any mom listening at home, man, yeah. we wish we had those superpowers. Aren't all moms That's incredible. Right. Uh -huh. mom yourself, uh, two little ones at home. Guys. So well, who are you, Barry? You know, I'm thinking, uh, you know, Olaf. You know? Olaf from good Frozen? Sense. Yeah, good sense of humor. <laughs> He's kind of, he was my sleeper pick. It was, well, I, don't know, it's it's was, I don't think there was any money on Olaf. There was no money on Olaf. That's a great one, though. Look at all of those out of Labor going hard to the hole here, but oh my, they're going to whistle them for the offensive foul. I thought he got outside the defenders. 
Cougars on a there. six zero run, Scott. Yeah, they're closing this, uh, this half out nicely. This is something normally GCU does really well at home is close to half, but they can't oh, wow. buy a rebound. Yikes, that was. Michael Finke grabs it quickly, leaves for Drexel. All those offensive rebounds here down for this little mini spurt for the Cougars. They got 16 second chance points. We're still in the first half. Chicago State dominating in the paint. How about Blumberg's all alone? They'll say they're going to cut into that disadvantage if they keep passing that rock like that. Blumberg's, I love it. Go up there and break that rim off. Needs a game like this. Blumberg. I'm smiling for this big man, yeah. this young big man, because he has been put deep down on that bench, hasn't had much of an opportunity, but he's been working his tail off in practice. Matter of fact, Coach Marley said he might be one of the best practice players in America. Now he's getting a chance to show out in the game, and then you come back and you slide those biscuits, get in front of that offensive player, drive it to the hole, take one for the team. He's shaking off that right wrist. Appears to be okay. Well, he ain't coming out of this one. He could have a broken bone and he's going to keep playing. Speaking of broken bones, Matt Jackson fractured a couple ribs. Ouch. Lumberg's down low. Quickly, Michael Finke! Oh, was that a sweet feed, huh? Oh, oh, having a party on the 10th floor. These guys are taking turns dunking that ball. Nice interior passing. Volk's waking up here. Under two to go, stopping and popping, short rebound, Blumberg snaps that one high on the air. Let's see if he gets a little pick and pop. Move down low, Freyer in the corner, Michael Finke, not there. Strickland on the run, quickly, up court. Wow, looks like they got Tim Finke. On Harris. Well, Coach Marley not real happy with that one because that was a shot from a long, a long shot from three. And plenty of opportunity for the Lopes to get back in transition. They weren't able to get the ball under control and they let the Cougars continue to attack inside against them. That's where they got a look. They talked about their poor field goal shooting. They, they want to get that ball in transition and run it down your throat. Got to get back and wall that basketball up, get it stopped. Force him to turn back out or to the side, not let him go to the basket you're trying to defend. Harris with five, he averages 15.5, 81% from the line. Little full court press here by the Cougs. Drexel moves past Harris. Tim Finke, open look, pulls down. Freyer quickly, Drexel, he pulls down, now inside the arc. And he hits nothing but that. Nice pump fake, get the defender to fly by, one dribble for rhythm, and then you gather yourself, get on balance, go straight up, straight down, knock it straight through. Six points, six boards for Trey Drexel. Strickland takes it. I think that got blocked. Yeah, thank you. Oh, they didn't call no. him? They're going to say he Ooh. shot it over the backboard? Oh, my. Well, that's a, that's an odd one. Did this slip out of his hand? Or Coach something? Urban's not really protesting too vehemently, oh. so maybe the call was correct. Woo. He should have acted like it. Chance for the Lopes to get two offensive possessions here. Up high, Oscar Freyer. Still got the bucket, but it wasn't him. That's a birthday basket right there. Freire turned 21 on Tuesday. He snagged that one from behind the rim, finessed it around the backboard, and laid it in with the right hand. It was still pretty. Shaw swung. Aaron Pass trying to get it to Spear. 24.3 on the clock. Yeah, shot clock's turned off, so the Lopes can take the last shot of the half here up 14 they can go to that locker with a 16 or a 17 point advantage for the last five from the field by the lopes 
10 remaining. Drexel, seven, six. And down tight, Bobberg's home the harm. Oh, he's just Woo! showing off now. Look, his teammates love him. Finky gives him a little body bump there. They're throwing that basketball around. What a beautiful pass here. I didn't even see him open. Drexel finds a big man, and he ain't messing around tonight. Not he's tonight. not going up there underhand trying to flip someone over the defense. He's going in there like a man and slamming him down. 6-0 run, GCU. <laughs> lane violation. Ooh. I'm gonna get him another free throw. He hasn't been to the free throw line very much. Obviously, he hasn't been getting the minutes. But, you, know, you get all that energy and adrenaline pumping through your veins after a nice big first half, a couple big slams and three-point shots. This is where you got to slow the heart rate down, go back to what your cues are, and your free throw routine, and knock these down. Knock this one down, I guess it's one shot. what happened in New Mexico. They got that shot off of 3.3 seconds from half court. Sean, not going to happen. Good half for the Lopes. Big half. 43-26. GCU over Chicago State at the half. First of two here on their home court. Saturday against UMKC. Down courtside, Kate Longworth. All right, thank you. Well, first, Coach Bean, back here in this atmosphere. What does it mean to the team returning to having the help of the sixth man after that tough road trip? Well, it means everything. And I told our guys, you got to play like it. We only got six more of these games conference up here. So uh, they got to come out and give everything they got. They deserve it. Uh, our guys work hard. Uh, you know, we kind of went on a lapse there, took some bad shots and didn't rebound the basketball. So we just got to stay focused. But overall, the team is shooting over 50%. Everyone contributing as well. What have you seen standing out from your team so far on this offense? Well, really happy for Rob. You know, he's had a tough go at it, uh, but he's played well in that first half. So uh, good for him. He's worked hard in practice. He hasn't got his head down. Uh, Tim hit a few shots, which is great, but got to do a better job down there being strong with the ball. Still too many turnovers. Uh, Damari and Ali got to be better. All right, we look forward to seeing what the team brings in the second half. And, guys, the score is 43-26, but you hear that intensity from Dan Marley. We know he always demanded the best from his team, but as he mentioned, Roberts Bumbers coming on strong in the first half, eight points overall so far to his name. Yeah, big 43 points by the Lopes. They scored 40 at the half against 41, rather, at New Mexico State. This offense lighting up a little bit here as of late. Nate will be back with more of our halftime festivities from DC Arena in Phoenix. Again, the Lopes on top, 43-26 over the Cougars from Chicago State. It's not about where you were born. It's not about your gender. Or the color of your skin. Whether you're rich, poor, or in the middle. No matter what you play, if you have the skill and drive to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide the opportunity. You use the latest technology to treat patients, but your care and compassion is timeless. And as an RN, you delight in sharing it. But there's always room to grow. Advancing your career means helping more patients and providing even more care. Grand Canyon University's online programs in nursing make it convenient for you to become the expert every patient deserves. Healthcare has made significant advancements and GCU teaches you how to prepare for the future. By applying that knowledge, you're able to stay up to date with the latest medical technologies. And since GCU's nursing programs are online, you can access your program from anywhere. So you're always there for those most important. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. 
Anytime we don't win the last, it's going to be a disappointment. Um, whether we're coming in, uh, old team, young team, picked to win or not, we have the university, the facilities, the support, and we uh, have the reputation in our tennis program that we can compete at a high level. The experience that we gained last year, both teams winning the first round, bowing out narrowly in the semifinals with long, hard-fought matches, that's really, I think, going to pay dividends coming into this year. As on the women's side, it's super exciting. We have 11 home matches, it's even more than going back years into the Division II scheduling. It says a lot about the program. The girls do have two regular season WAC championships in the last few years. They're competing at a higher level and uh, it's easier to bring the teams out. It's going to be exciting to play in front of the student body and, and get to the local tennis community. Uh, it's coming out in some of these matches and watching us play. Men's side, we have more home matches than we have and since we've started the Division One campaign. Strength of schedule, we've always got some new teams on the schedule. Uh, we're starting off with Texas A&M on the women's side this weekend. Uh, they finished last season at 30th in the country. I believe it's going to be the highest ranked women's team that we've played so far. And uh, on the men's side, we're going to have a, a nice road trip playing against UCLA and UCSB on the same weekend. Uh, so uh, again, it's a tribute to the direction that we're going in that uh, we're able to get teams from top conferences on our schedule. And uh, we expect to see more of that as we keep moving down the road. And we want to go all the way in the WAC tournament on both sides. The gals have a score to settle. Our record last year wasn't as good as it has been in recent years. And, and although we mentioned the, the youth that we had in the uh, graduating or top three players the year before. We don't like to use that as an excuse in any way. So we still feel that we can win the conference championship with those girls as well. So uh, we want to have strong records in and outside of the conference. And even though we have tough schedules, we want to go all the way. UTSA Phoenix to host a Kids Day on Saturday, January 26th before the home match against Nevada. Check-in begins at 12.45 p.m. At 1 p.m., the kids will get lessons from both the men's and women's tennis team members. Then at 2, kids will be served pizza, and then they can start making posters so that they can cheer on the women's team with their 3 p.m. match. All activities will take place on campus at the tennis facility, which is located at West Missouri Avenue and North 30th Drive. You can go to myemail.constantcontact.com slash gcu-kids-day to sign up. It sounds like a great day for the family. Also a great event for anyone who loves to cheer on those in the Lopes uniform. A game here at GCU Arena right now. At halftime, the folks here getting entertained by Ladderman. You've probably seen him on America's Got Talent. And right now he's here in the Valley showing off that talent here at GCU. Also sporting their talent on the court. The Lopes, who right now have the lead over the Cougars of Chicago State. 43-26, your score here at halftime. And I'm Kate Longworth. Thanks so much for being back here with us on the Halftime Report, where we are bringing you all things Lopes. And uh, we've seen what they've been doing out on the court, these players. And if you're a Lopes fan, you're definitely familiar with the play of Carlos Johnson. You know that on the court, he likes to take it to the opposition with some big dunks, bringing on the competition. But he's a man of many layers. And off the court, he's also very passionate about spending time with both family and friends. But what, or should I say, who is his true love? Will we find out in this edition of This or That? What's good, everyone? This is Carlos Johnson. This is This or That. Steak or chicken? Ooh, steak. Snapchat or Instagram? <laughs> Snapchat. <laughs> Jordan or LeBron? LeBron. Smart friend or funny friend? Smart friend. Dancing or karaoke? Dancing. Coffee or energy drink? Energy drink. Netflix or YouTube? Netflix. Country or hip hop? Hip hop. Steak or Snapchat? St Steak. LeBron or a smart friend? LeBron. Dancing or energy drink? Uh, dancing. Netflix or hip hop? Ooh, hip hop. Steak or LeBron? Uh, 
I guess. LeBron. <laughs> Dancing or hip hop? Hip hop. LeBron or hip hop? I'm such a LeBron fan. LeBron. Gotta love how hard it was to choose between what to eat or who to cheer for. In the end, though, Carlos Johnson going with his hero, LeBron. And uh, he's been playing like LeBron as of late. We'll call him King Johnson as he scored in double figures in the last five of six games and averaging just over 13 points with over five boards on the last we on last week's road trip. All right, more coming up at the break here. Uh, Barry and Scott will sit down with you to break down the Dignity Health highlights and stats right after this. Don't go anywhere. It's a party here inside GCU Arena. We want you to be a part of it. We'll be right back. State Credit Union, a local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years, can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, MLS number 410376. Hi, I'm Brittany, and this is Ask Easy. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brittany Holwin, and you should watch Ask GCU. Where we answer your questions every week. And the points don't matter. Wait, what? Tune in every week for answers to be questioned. Where we answer your questions in a common, pro in a, all right. Common professional manner. <laughs> Tweet hashtag Ask GCU to get your question featured. Mountain Dew Ice, a clear, refreshing lemon lime. Back at GCU Arena in Phoenix, 43-26. The Lopes over the Cougars from Chicago State. Closed out the half in a 7-0 run. Barry Vitell alongside Scott Williams as the uh, Lopes open things up after Jacob got that second personal foul. They went on a 21-2 run. They were absolutely fantastic during that run. Did it with defense, got easy buckets inside, moved the basketball before the defense could recover, knocked down open three-point shot. Let's take a look at our Dignity Health halftime highlights and stats. Dignity Health, hello, human kindness. Well, it was the Cougs got, got off to the great start there, that hand, the high handoff there. That was a 6-0. Uh, run well the six straight buckets and then Lopes come back here to get the Drexel goes inside gets on that offensive glass gets an and one that got everybody fired up and I love this one by Frere get a little screen by your big man you knock that three point shot down and then I love this one by Milstead grabbing this basketball and the defensive end go coast to coast take it all the way to the rack get the easy bucket in one Finky comes back after some good ball movement. Tim Finky had that corner pocket three-point shot, knocks it down, then Blumberg's. He finds himself open underneath the basket, pops back out to the outside, knocks down a long shot from behind the arc. And Shaw was wonderful in that first half, attacking the basket as well as Bell. He went inside for a bucket. It was a little 6-0 run, got the crew some momentum back after struggling. But it was Robert Blumberg who was just the man in the middle, throwing it down with ferocity underside. And he returns the favor to his buddy, Finky, who goes up over the 10th, wrecks the rim as well. It was just a dump fest down the straight. One more here by Blumberg. Gives a good pick right there. Defense has got to help out and be aggressive and take it right to the rack. Everybody got a invited to the uh, party tonight, all nine scoring. As you look at the field goal percentage, 57.1, 5 of 11. 
from the arc. Rebounding margin in favor of the Lopes assist. Bench points, wow, 19 to 2. Yeah, Bench got off to that great start, kept it going right throughout the half. Did a really good job. They've given up too many points in the paint. That'll be the one thing Coach Marley will look at. Get on that defensive glass. Don't allow them those second chance opportunities to get some points, easy points around that rim. All right, Kate will rejoin you in just a moment. Second half around the corner. Keep it right here. Lopes on top, 43 26 over Chicago State. You know you want to. Don't be shy. You do it behind my back. So say it to my face. face. You don't know, know me. me. You know what I am? I'm a pitcher. I'm a striker. I'm a point guard. I'm a linebacker. I'm a setter. Shortstop. High jumper. Wrestler. Defender. Goalie. Student. Student athletes. That's who we are. As a teacher, your calling was always to make a difference and positively impact the future. You live with a deep sense of purpose and strive to inspire generations of change. GCU's online Master's of Education degree program gives you the skills you need to grow and develop your career, while also making sure you have time for yourself and your family. Today, you can learn anywhere and anytime, giving kids a look into the technological advances that pushed you forward. Being strong and compassionate makes you a role model through this formative period in their lives. You're not just inspiring future generations of leaders and innovators to reach for their dreams. You're giving them the tools they need to achieve them. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Welcome back as we get you ready for second half action here at GCU Arena, where the Lopes have a 17-point lead right now over the Cougars of Chicago State. 43-26 to your score. And uh, it is Dizzy Knight here, and he has called himself Mufasa from the Lion King, and Dan Marley has to be pleased right now. His team shooting over 57%. So let's check out the Streets of New York leading scores from that first half. Streets of New York, pizza, pasta, and subs for over 40 years. As you mentioned, strong shooting from the Lopes. All nine players have seen action tonight. They have found the bucket with Robert Blumberg leading the way. Eight points, Dan Marley very complimentary of him at the break. Meanwhile, uh, we have three guys coming in with six points from Mike Binky to Milstead and Drexel. And then leading the way for the Cougars, Shaw with 10 and Harris with six. Now you'll know coming into this game, Jacob was the man to watch. However, early foul travel left him with only 10 minutes of action in that first half. He has four points to his name. We are about to start in the second half. Robert Blumberg. I know. Oh, Frayer said no, no, no. You're not going to happen. Sorry, Mr. Jacob. And I'll tell you what, maybe send and labor a little bit of a message here as Coach Marley he wasn't happy with that production. Just three points in the first half for Lair. So he comes back with Blumberg's, and they tried to throw a post up for him, but they turned it over. Yeah, Blumberg's plus 17 and only eight minutes in that opening half. Three is off. And Milstead makes his way up. Stops beyond the arc. Michael Finke plays catch down low. Blumberg's. Harris on him. Nice feed, but not going to happen for Milstead. Oh, long around that basket right there. Who was that? Bell just swatted that one away. Now make it Bowles. Bowles got that block. Trying to set something up. Didn't happen. Shaw, left hand high. That goes off the glass. Yeah, Shaw's got a nice little uh, ability to throw that ball a little higher than that defense can stretch up to try to block it. He gets it right over the top of their fingertips and falls softly through the hoop. Shaw's got 12 in the game. I mean, averaging just about that, 11.6. Finky. Looks for three, not there. Drexel up over the top. Yeah, I think he faked the pass like he was going to swing it in rotation, then he shot it. I'm not a big fan of that. I think he's more of a catch and shoot guy. Most of these low players are when they try to do a little too much on their own behind that arc. Seems like they miss more times than they make. And the Labor's got to knock off this. Rusty's developed here the last two plus games. Oh, nice play right there. Good 
Coach Irvin a lot of credit for that one. You slide the guy across the top. It's tough for the defender to slide through all that traffic. While he's still trying to recover, you clear out that weak side and go right to the hoop. There's no one there to help. Milstead, Drexel, far side. For Freyer, rather. Oh, nice three. Puts the fans in their seat. Well, Freyer getting it going from behind the arc. His second three of the ball game. Oh, off the mark. Milstead brings it up. by Shaw comes back out Michael Finke he'll leave it there for Drexel Michael Finke underneath Milstead nice pass Michael Finke yeah it was a great pass I mean he kind of backhanded it right to the cutter and Milstead was just so fast getting to that buck Milstead just picked that off that little floater of a pass Milstead off the window well, Shaw tried to pay the passing lane, and Milstead made him pay. 7-0 run to begin the second half for GCU. They lead it by 20. Coach Urban and Chicago State. Yeah, well, one more time, just to put it right around the defender's waist. <laughs> They'll love that. And then Milstead was reading that pass the whole time. I don't understand. I, that one was even thrown, but... He wanted to throw it back over to Finky so he could get the dunk, but the defender just played the passing lane, didn't stay between the ball and the basket, and gave Milstead an easiest bucket he'll get all season long. Chicago State dealing with heavy hearts as the sudden passing of their sports information director, Corey Miggins. Just fantastic. Representative for Chicago State. And uh, tough, tough news for all Cougars. As uh, they've lost somebody that was uh, definitely one of the best. Did a great job for Chicago State. Always very kind to everybody that came in to visit. Certainly everyone from GCU reflected those sentiments. And uh, everyone at GCU wants to extend their condolences. Yeah, I think of how about how hard it is for the Chicago State family players and and coaching staff to play with that on your mind and they're trying to do the best they can. I had to go to a funeral last week for somebody I didn't even know and start shedding a tear. So I, I can only imagine how close they were and uh, how difficult this could be. But you know, play as hard as you can and honor their spirit. Coach Urban in his first season, a Chicago native, hired back in August, spent six seasons at Morgan Park High School on Chicago's south side. An 18 year collegiate coach and associate head coach at Southern Illinois. And certainly is deeply entrenched in the Chicago area as their first year head coach. Yeah, he's off to a slow start, but I was reading a book by John Feinstein. He was saying it was called the Legends Club and how hard it was to. Coach K Krzyzewski to kind of get his foothold and compete against the likes of NC State, North Carolina, and Georgia Tech with Bobby Kremen. So it takes some time to build a program. Up high and put back. Jacob. That was interesting because he tried to get the, the slam dunk, but it squirted out of his hands, hit the backboard, and as he was pulling on the rim, the ball fell back in. Drexel takes it in Milstead, put past Michael Finke down low, Blumbergs. Go back to this one one more time here by Jacobs. He tries to dunk, it squirts right out of his hands, hits the backboard, and he's got his hands on the rim. But that should that could be considered basket interference. <laughs> I doubt that any coach or any referee would ever call that, but it was certainly interesting. interesting. Yeah. Milstead. Look in the arc. Rexel moves inside. Milstead. Got him on the arm, right yeah. on the forearm. Nice job by Milstead. See how aggressive he is? He understands these Chicago, Chicago State players did not stand in front of him. He gives him a little head and shoulder fake or a foot fake or just flat out puts the pedal to the metal and takes it right to the basket. Michael Johnson with the personal foul. 
Made with tons of confidence, Tamari Milstead. Doesn't go. Michael Finke picks up. They got big Mike in. Coach Marlis saying, hey, we got to get some extra possessions. Finke trying to get one on the free throw line. was always the toughest one to get because the players already established inside position. That's one you may want to let go. Away from it. Freyer is going to be called. Filing Delshawn Strickland away from the wall. Third on GCU. Well, when I was watching the Lopes practice on Tuesday, I mean, they were playing jailhouse basketball. They were really getting after one another. A lot of pushing, a lot of shoving, a lot of holding, bumping, and grinding. So it, it has shown the way they play defense tonight. Shaw. Had by Milstead. Worked inside. Drexel got a hand on it up to Freyer. Freyer up for Milstead. The connection. Oh, it. Reversal on the call by the official. It will belong to Chicago State. 51-32, the score early on, 15-41, down to Kate Longworth. All right, guys, well, I already talked to the players uh, when we turned the calendar to 2019, what their New Year's resolution was, and it was unanimous. They all want to get that WAC championship. And I'm guessing that was also the wish when a couple players blew out the candles on the birthday cakes this week. A big happy birthday to the star of the show, Oscar Freyer, the forward turned 21 on Tuesday. And his teammate, J.J. Rimes, will be the big 21 on Saturday. He's, of course, a junior out of Shadow Mountain High School. Meanwhile, Maggie, you see her at some of the games sitting behind the team. She's an instrumental part of this team during practice, playing quite a big role. She's in charge of keeping score, time, and keeping this team on pace during practice. And we all know if you, how you play in practice is how it shows up in the game. So we wish her a happy birthday as well. She turned 21 last week when the team was on the road. And the Lopes overall, they're getting what they wish for because this team is only getting stronger. And they just got word that Mikey Dixon, a guard out of St. John's, has received permission from his coach, Chris Mullen, to transfer here to GCU. He will be joining the team. However, he is not eligible to play until next January and uh, he will be out here though with the team and uh, very excited he brings with him uh, quite the basketball rapport and he has some great tools he can bring averaging over 16 points per game uh, strong from three-point range beyond the arc and also strong when he steps up to that free throwing and I did talk to him because tonight you know we know it's uh, the best night here happiest place on earth and guess what guys Mikey's favorite uh, Disney character is Mickey. Yeah, Mickey. All right. Yeah, That's well, a good one. Mikey, Mickey. I like the way Kate gave a shout out to uh, Maggie Poehler. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Was very very nice. nice. Yeah, she sits down there. She said she was going to be sitting down underneath the uh, bucket, but I haven't found her down there yet. I got a chance to talk, talk to Mikey a little bit before. He is happy as a clam to be here on GCU campus. Picked up, Blumbergs. Drexel, the loose ball. Hoop and a harm. Uh, Coach Marley, you know, nailed it when he said he was just so excited for Blumberg because the kid has continued to work hard. And look at this right here. This is what I was talking about, one of the keys of the game, getting in and out passing lanes. We've seen a couple here in the second half. And Drexel is so, always so quick. He's like Martin getting those 50-50 balls. He jumps on and takes it right to the rack, catches the defender in the restricted zone. Brings around and in. Shaw brings it up. I by Milstead. Goes right. Emmerich Bowles. Bowles looking for an option. Goes left now. Back to Shaw. Long three attempt rings out. Freyer. Cougars 0 for 8 from the arc. Carlos Johnson at the scorer's table waiting to come in. 
Milstead moves right. Shaw's on him. Lumbers. Heels out up high. Oh, they tried, but unsuccessful. Foul's going to be called on Christian Jacob. Jacob's going to pick up his third. Well, they tried to do that little high handoff of Blumberg. They're trying to get him some more opportunities underneath. Didn't get that one to go, but I like the way he battled underneath there for that ball. Drex allowed. Carlos Johnson in. This is where the Lopes have been so good. I, I think I, I just love watching them execute these baseline out of balance plays. Blumberg's inside Johnson. Johnson turning. Ooh, he's got a hand on it. Looks like Harris is going to be called. Yeah, that, that's a simple play right there. You're just going to pop out Blumberg's to the corner and then post the inbounder, Carlos Johnson, right down there on that block. Too big, too strong for most anybody in the Western Athletic Conference for someone to guard him down low, and they just took advantage of a mismatch. Two on Harris. Labor is going to come in for Michael Finke. See how Alessandro responds after sitting on the bench to open the second half. Well, he's going to get some opportunities um, because that was the that was the focus. Get him that basketball down on that block and let him work out. 12-2 run for the Lopes here to begin the second. Wow, big spurts for the Lopes. Look at that. 21 to 2 in the first half, and now another working on another 12-2 heater right now. Blumberg's working on bowls. Nice work there. Back out to Shaw. Near side comes back. Blumberg's kicks it back. Bowles looking for some room off the window and in. Yeah, Bowles, Shaw, Strickland. When they take it to the rack, they're all so good at throwing that thing a little higher and using that backboard, let it carry, carry them in to the hoop. Lumbers down to Labor. Labor muscling his way, but he's called for the travel. Now, Labor can't believe it. There. That's a couple times now where he's tried to get ultra aggressive once with a spin move. This time he just, like you said, put his Shoulder down was going hard to that bucket and officials got him with a travel. Shaw kicks it back, but Blumberg picks it up. Oh my, flare up to Carlos Johnson! Well, that was nice. You know, Frayer obviously had a clear runway as well, but he did the unselfish thing and kicked it ahead to his teammate. And yeah, it was a little LeBron-esque right there, bringing that thing backward behind his neck and firing it through the basket. Turnaround, Jacob not going to happen. Blumbergs with a rebound. They're doing a nice job shutting Jacob down inside. He got a couple early, but he's been quiet since. Real steady, careful pressure. Crossed over. Look at Blumberg's hustling back in rotation, getting those hands up on defense, also important. And then Carlos Johnson, my goodness, tried to take the rim home with him. Jared Martin. Heels off the warm up, makes his way over to the table. We got Labor here. Yeah, they got Labor with the foul. He got a little too straight up and down. You don't, you don't mind Jacob shooting that three out there. Get yourself into a lower stance, knowing or anticipating that he's going to drive rather than shoot. Bumberg's out. Martin in. Jacobs. Jacob hit the floor pretty hard there. Slow getting up. Milstead leaves it there. Labor, floater, not there. I'm sure he was ready to receive that. He hadn't been ready to play tonight. Oh, oh he got away with a high dribble there. Charge, Trayvon Bell. I think Trayvon would have rather had the travel than the, than the charging fall. That's his second personal. Game got a little sloppy here. Some bad shots on one end and, some and a number of turnovers. Just one more time. Martin gets down there and looked like he had his 
heels above that restrictive air, restricted area and took that charge. Ropes shooting 58%. Lead it 57-34. Careful. Johnson moving. Unforced air. Mm -hmm. Milstead with a little one-handed left pass. And you can see Marley right there saying, put two hands on the ball to make the pass. So tough to guard against some of the lackadaisical play when you all of a sudden you find yourself up 23. 13 turnovers for the Lopes. They had 19 at UTRGV. Oop, Martin got a hand on the back. Harris. He sold that one yeah. to the official. There's no doubt that Martin put his hand on his back. But it wasn't hard enough to knock Harris to the floor. No harm done. Just the fifth team foul. Side out of bounds. It, see, Martin just comes over, just taps him a little bit. Oh. And Harris says he acts like he got shot with a cannon. Drops to the floor. No inbounds. Bowles leaves it for Rob Shaw, the senior. Bowles. Turns. Ooh, little skippity skip skip down the lane. Ooh, throwing the ball over, guys walking with the basketball. What well, was a pretty good game here up until about the 15 minute mark of this half has all of a sudden gotten really ugly. Little Beauty and the Beast. Trying to find some sort of Disney reference. I'm not I, as good I see where you're going with that. I'm, I'm no Kate Longworth. Back over, Tim Finke. Gene Witherspoon, all for the foul. Yeah, that's going to be free throws. Only 11.47 to play, and the Cougs are in the penalty. GCU in the bonus. They're going to shoot some free throws when we come back. Time out of the court, 11.47 to go. Second half, Lopes in control, 57-34 to over Chicago State. We'll be back right after this. Getting ready to trade it in. What are you doing? Just a little shopping. Wait, a new truck. Don't you think I should be involved? Of course. We'll head over to Sanderson Ford as soon as I'm done. I don't have time today. Hope we're going with four doors this time. Ooh, of course. I know exactly what I want. I mean, we want. A lightning blue Ford F-150 Super Crew with EcoBoost. All done. Shop from home, buy from home, we deliver. From the dealer you can trust, Sanderson Ford. GCU. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. Tonight, GCU men's basketball game is brought to you in part by Dignity Health. Hello, human kindness. By Sanderson Ford. The best play on a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. And by BSN Sports, the largest provider of team sports equipment and apparel in the country. Terry Vitale, Scott Williams, Kate Longworth from GCU Arena in Phoenix, Arizona. Lopes on their way to improving to four and one in the conference. This is the first of two on their home court on this Disney night. Let it go. I was watching some of these kids sing along. They know way too many of the lyrics to this song. <laughs> My goodness, oh, it's funny. Hey, I didn't know, was, was Nemo Disney? Yeah. I might want to change my favorite character. Dory? Yeah. Really Love me some Dory. Dory. Yeah. yeah. Was that Ellen? Yeah. The generous yeah. with the voice? Yeah. yeah. She did a great job with that. Was, I mean, come on. Finding Nemo? Oh, you got to love it. Love Nemo. Very hard. Heart wrenching, you know. What a Separated. father does. Yeah, what a father does for his son, huh? Oh, Wasn't that great? Yeah. What was the son's name with that bad flipper? He had that bad flipper. Uh, Why do you go there? Why do you do this? Anybody? Mm -hmm. <sighs> kind of pulled out your heartstrings, didn't it? Huh? 
brought a tear to your eye? Yeah, it did. You know, oh, who was the guy, the turtle crush? Oh, Love crush. Mr. crush. Yeah, the, uh, dude. Dude. <laughs> oh, of course, the son was Nemo. The Nemo? Not the bad Nemo. Yeah, they were looking for well, Nemo. Of course they were, but who was the dad Nemo? then? Oh, God. Okay, Albert, oh, Albert oh, Brooks played uh, the was a voice. That's all I know. That's been a while. Laver can't hang on to it. Poor Ollie. Yeah, not his night, huh? I mean, he's got a stretch of a couple games now where he's been kind of stuck on that launch pad. Just can't find a rhythm to his game on either side of the ball. Pinching in. Bowles back out. Harris. Not going to happen. But the rebound is pulled down by Witherspoon. Back out, Harris. Tries to go left. Milstead off of the Cougars. Milstead ran that ball down the corner and rifled it back off one of the green jerseys and out of bounds. I'm not sure who he, who he got it off of, but look at Milstead. He's so quick with his first step, and he just rifles it right off of, uh, I think it was... Witherspoon. Uh, was it Witherspoon? Yeah, he <laughs> Witherspoon couldn't react in time. He didn't surprise to even see Milstead coming out of his blind side. Harris took a hard fall. Made his way up the court. Johnson. Okay, we will allow that one, okay? Yeah, well, you're up 25. Go ahead, try one out. It was All nice right. ball reversal, but I thought that was one where Johnson could have sold that outside shot and then drove that one to the rack. Good work underneath. Yeah, Jacob Larry finally gets a bucket underneath. He's been working hard and hadn't had a whole lot to go for him right either. Maybe it was Jacob and Labor taking each other out of this basketball game. They're neutralizing one another, but Jacob found one down, down low that time. Jacob with eight. Martin, Labor. Turns. Bounce pass. Ooh. We almost got that one. Johnson quickly. Finky turn. And go for Tim Finky. Well, that's how you call for the basketball. You cut from the weak side. He was all the way out of the three-point line. Flash to the middle with his hands out saying, give me the ball. I am wide open. And then he uh, squares his shoulders and knocks it down. I always tell my son, you got to call for that basketball like you want to do something with. Three for three, ten points for Tim Finke. Right, Jacob and Labor got tangled up underneath after that Aaron shot, and that's going to be four on Jacob. One more time there. That's a great flash against that. Zone defense, get one right in front of the free throw line. Been knocking that one down since the sixth grade. Spear in for Jacob. Look at Finky's eye right there. He got caught. Had to take a cut. He tried to glue it first. And then it, it, the glue didn't hold, so they had to put a couple stitches on it. Now he looks like he's been in a, doing some MMA. It's not that eye, it's the other eye, but. He's in a bad way. Not the prettiest guy to begin with. He don't what? need to injure his what? eye. What? Well, I'm sorry. I'm just going to call it like it is. He could be a Disney Mr. character. Mr. Mrs. Finky. Like, oh, seriously. <laughs> he can get me back in practice. I ain't the most handsome of bald-headed guys either. Ah. It's Disney night. Bowls. I love how they put glue and stuff now. Wait. Who would have thought of that? Just put some super glue in there. It'll be okay. Yeah, that's, that's going to be a tough one on labor. I thought it was all ball. Apparently, they're going to. Oh, maybe they got Finky with. Maybe they got Finky coming over and getting a piece of the rest. Just use bench 26 to 2 on scoring the Cougars. Labor does a pretty good job staying high here. And maybe they got, yeah, they got Martin swiping with that left hand. Mm. Speaking of my son, when we get a break here in the action, he's down the free throw line. He got his first dunk finally. Oh, yeah. So he called me up yesterday, all excited. Got a chance to throw one down. Now he's like intoxicated with the sound of that <laughs> that rim snapping. It is contagious, I guess. Martin open for three. Oh! Come on, Jared Martin. Yeah, Jared Martin's been playing some really good basketball. I'm happy for this senior. He's 
going out with a bang. He wants this whack title as bad as anybody on that team. Not more. Six of his last seven from the arc. Jared Martin, he's a four of five from there at New Mexico State. Tim Finke wants a little. Ooh. That's it. That's Ooh, probably the glue in the eye. Money. He's yeah. got glue in the eye. That's my right. Poor guy. That's right. His eyelids are, are uh, closed. But that one right there, I like the first one. He, he motioned like he was going to shoot the first one, then kind of did a little shimmy with the basketball out there behind the arc. Those, those rarely, I mean, your percentages are lower with those than the ones that you just catch and shoot. Aver came out with a little heat on Shaw. That was a great on ball defense. That's so. Shaw moves left. I think Carlos Johnson poked foot. that ball into the leg Shaw. of Shaw and it went out of bounds. So really GCU defensively, they're doing a wonderful job helping off onto the basketball. And one more time, Carlos Johnson said, oh, I'll just kind of get my hand right where you're dribbling, bang it off your thigh. Drexel. Moves left. Now right. Martin's got a little bit of room. Turns to the bucket. Goes left. Drives up into the paint. That is foul. Smart heady play. Just knew that they, if he could get any contact inside, he's going to learn himself an opportunity to go to the free throw line. 67-38 is the score. GCU on top of Chicago State. How about Tim Finke? Ever so dapper and handsome Tim Finke. Lighten it up. He's got some, uh, he's doing well. Yeah, he's doing fantastic. I, I got on him saying he looked more like an MMA fighter than a basketball player, but he's out there battling tonight. That's been the most important thing. He's doing on both ends of the floor. I, I love this one right here. That's the one I like there, that catch and shoot threes. Uh, you get in rhythm and knocking them down when you start to start all that dancing and chucking and jiving. Uh, rarely do those threes go down, and that was the one we highlighted earlier. Playing off the basketball, you flash in there with uh, an aggressive nature to yourself. Your hands up, about your shoulder width, giving the passer a target, easy catch and shoot. Let's send it over to Kate Longworth. All right, guys, well, we know what the landscape looks like here at Side GC Arena and the WAC, but let's take a look at the college landscape across the hardwood when it comes to men's Division I basketball. And it's a happy league for Scott Williams, for me, and anyone else who does not like the Blue Devils. Just raise your hand and start clapping. Anybody but did go down. The top-ranked school falling to Syracuse last Monday, 95-91 in overtime. They faced number four, Virginia, on Saturday. Michigan, Tennessee, Virginia, Gonzaga rounding out of that top five. And then next year you'll find Michigan State, Kansas Tech, Texas Tech, Virginia Tech, and Nevada at that 10 spot with their 17-1 record. Then we'll get Florida State making the cut at 11, Kentucky 12, North Carolina. That's right, Scott Williams, Tar Heels at that number 13 spot. They did beat Notre Dame 75-69 on Tuesday. Auburn there, Marquette, and Buffalo representing the Mid-Atlantic, or the Mid-American rather, in that 16th spot. And finishing off the top 25, Houston, Villanova, Iowa, and Mississippi State, Indiana. And some Pac-12 action tonight. Pac-12 not represented in the AP Top 25, but they are playing. Arizona trailing right now to Oregon, and Arizona State with an early lead over Oregon. But I'll just take my hat on the fact that Duke blocks, right, guys? That's right. That's Anybody Scott's but Duke. My Tar Heels got to pick it up, though. We're, we're, we're reaching yeah, that, that spot where we got to start turning it on. Second half shooting, Scott. Chicago State 33%, GCU 62. Mm, that's, that's pretty good, right? Yeah, and, and they've done it with, you know, with attacking the basketball, those turnovers that led to easy buckets. And they're sharing the ball real well. Oh, there's Hustle. Think he started it, got it over to Jared Martin. He's going to. They called it. He tried to do timeout. I think there was a problem with the uh, oh, shot the clock? game. The shot clock did not start. Mm. So, <laughs> which actually really helped Martin out because he was going to have to call a timeout. He was yeah. in a bad situation there, and 
That'll save Coach Marley and his staff a timeout there as they'll reset here. And looks like they're going to put about 24, 25 seconds back on that shot clock. 7.47 on the game clock. Well, I, I don't, maybe they didn't start either clock. So I oh. think it takes some time off the game clock and the shot clock. I would have thought that was about five to six seconds worth of action there before they caught it. Twenty-seven on the shot clock. Okay, that'll work. I guess the game clock was with us. Seven forty-seven to play. Three seconds. Folks up thirty. Let's see if they can get a couple buckets and clear their bench. Tim Finke back out. Martin moves down. The elbow back out. Johnson looking right now left Martin down low labor labor trying to turn no he goes out Drexel Drexel stops and pops Ooh. so we got spear on labor yeah they're, 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 they will not let labor get going tonight they're double team anytime he catches the ball playing real physical oh, with him. Jacob's got four already tonight this one spear a little extracurricular you know, after the passes, he was going to try to box him out. And instead of using his body, he really uses that left elbow, and, and he brings it a little high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he kept it down low, you know, beneath the numbers, around the letters there of labor, no problem. But you start getting up over around that collar and chin area, now the officials are going to call that, and they don't want someone to get, you know, take one to the windpipe. at the line. Very interesting to see a guy who's struggling, as good of an offensive player as he is. Let's see if these free throws here will give Labor an opportunity to get himself going now. It's one thing I used to see a lot of good players in the NBA do when their shots weren't falling. They figured out a way to get themselves to the free throw line. You can visualize that basketball going through the hoop. Labor with five points. Cameron Bowles, on by Fingy. Move down, now back out. Spear, looks for Shaw. Shaw up over the top. There's a way up high. It's near the shot clock expiring. Drexel. Martin. In the corner, Carlos Johnson down low to Labor off the window. Textbook. Yeah, it was. It was a nice job by Labor. He didn't really ride his guy up the free throw line, but he held what he had. So he held that position and created a passing angle for Johnson to be able to slip that ball to him along that baseline. Bowles takes it. They oh, Bowles oh, went yeah. down hard. I think he hit his shoulder, but oh. he's grabbing his right ankle. Martin called. He's going to walk it off a bit. Come back to the free throw line. Well, it hasn't always been pretty basketball tonight, but I'm proud of the Lopes players for fighting through kind of a slow first four or five minutes and finding the rhythm and realizing you cannot allow this to be a trap game. Let Chicago State to hang along for too long. They put their foot on him and not letting him back up. You can see as they went down. Oh, it's it's mm. Martin comes mm. down on the ankle. Yeah, and Martin comes down right on the backside, right on the ankle there. Good to see Bowles. No ill effects. Tim Finke. Back out Drexel. Moves left. Carlos Johnson near side. Labor not freed up. Drexel. Oh, look out. Somehow got to Carlos Johnson. Johnson stops and drops. That Boy, was, that that was one, fortuitous. Yeah, that was that one gun Johnson had earlier when he shot the three, and I thought he could have drove it. Well, this time he kind of hesitates. He kind of looks at the three like, maybe I should shoot this right here. Now I'm going to drive it to the basket. And good things happen when he go, that young man goes to the hole. Too big, too strong. He takes that contact, a la LeBron James, his yeah. favorite player and still has the concentration on the finish. 
Milstead and Brumbergs check back in. Doesn't go. Under six to go. Milstead on Shaw. Bounce pass. Goes past Spear and the Lopes will take it over. Michael Johnson checks in. There's a couple hard working players on that GCU bench and in practice that don't get a lot of light. I hope they can get themselves three, four minutes tonight and show what they can do in front of the Havoc. Blumberg pulls down, drives. Oh, he got picked off by Johnson. Martin came out, he's going to be called. Four on Martin. Rafe Gertis making his way over to the scores table is going to check in for Martin. Yeah, Gertis, JJ Ryan. I'm hoping a couple of these cats can see some action. Martin did a good job tonight. Going to get a nice bump off that bench. You expect the bench to play well at home, and that senior really did a nice job there. Be part of that 11-0 effort by uh, GCU in that first half and part of that 21 2 run really got these guys going. Johnson, Curtis, Curtis just throws it up off of the glass. Well, I realize young fella hasn't seen a lot of action. They give him the basketball, he wants to shoot it, but you got, you got five <laughs> minutes to play. <laughs> you don't got to shoot the first time you touch it. Marley just motioned to calm down. Yeah, calm down. You got, five, you got five minutes to work with. We're going to get it in your hands once or twice. He wants that first bucket. 0 for 1 coming in. Stepped out of bounds. With a spin. Under five to go. Looks looking to remain perfect on their home court. Johnson in the corner. Tim Finke. Played there tight. Johnson cuts in, does Tim Finke. Back out Johnson. Drives baseline. Stops. Good D there. And it's picked off. Up the court it goes to Witherspoon from Spear. Nice outlet pass by Spear. I mean, he battled the driver inside, got that ball, and then he did what Kevin Love does so well. Two-hand overhead pass, snap at 60 feet, past the defense for an easy bucket for one of his teammates. Tim Finky comes out. Milstead looking for a little bit of room. Gertis, bounce pass into Blumbergs. Back out. Gertis again from the arc. Doesn't happen. Johnson can't put it home. Loose ball, here comes Anthony Harris, Chicago State's leading scorer. Drives and Blumbergs takes the foul. And moving back a bit, feet were implanted. Top out of the floor, 355 remaining. The Lopes have been in control throughout. They lead it 75-41. Lead it right here. There's an exciting destination for food, fun, and golf in the heart of Phoenix. Come to the GCU Hotel and Canyon 49 Grill, where our hospitality management students gain real-world experience and deliver unmatched service. Enjoy beautiful amenities like a resort-style pool, full-service fitness center, championship golf course, and coffee shop GCBC. Canyon 49 Grill serves American fare all day and happy hour with a great vibe and Lopes pride. Room rates start at $89 per night. Visit gcuhotel.com today. All right, with Joe. 
Just under four minutes to go. The Lopes have a 34 point lead over Chicago State. And a quick look at other teams in the WAC. A score a lot of Lopes fans are going to like to see is that Bakersfield on top right now of Kansas City. Kansas City, of course, coming inside GCU Arena this Saturday. They do lead the WAC right now with a perfect record. However, if they take the loss tonight, they drop down and the Lopes would then be tied with Bakersfield in that number one spot. Bakersfield pretty hot. Winners of eight. Oh, there's. They have a record, rather, of 8-2 over their last 10 games. Meanwhile, New Mexico State off to an early lead at Seattle University. Utah Valley with a 65-45 win oh, right now for UTRQB. Meanwhile, the Cole Powell team put up a fight, but in the end did not come out on top, falling to Chicago State at Chicago State. 50-48 in the final there. Also on the women's side, Bakersfield. 57 over Kansas City, Utah Valley, and RT, UTRGV right now neck and neck, 57 55. New Mexico State gets the win over Seattle University on the women's side. We've been talking about what a competitive whack season it's going to be, and just buckle up because right now, guys, we're just talking about one night here, Thursday night, and how the lead is already changing. A lot of eyes already focusing in on Saturday's tilt between Kansas City and the Lopes, and we knew this could be a trap game. We talked about that coming into this game, but Scott, you impressed with how the Lopes uh, stayed uh, laser focused on this game, and then of course tomorrow to be practicing for Kansas City. Yeah, I have. I, I I thought they started a little sluggish, but they really turned it on. That 21 to two run uh, got them going. They've never looked back since. They put their pedal to the metal and kept their foot on the throat of the Cougars. Harris at the line. I mean, in averaging 15 and a half points per game, that's his ninth. Milstead brings it up, under four to go. Looks right, goes to Gertis. Gertis, back out. Milstead. Johnson pulls down, drives. Doesn't go, rebound, pulled down by Spear. I, mean, I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe I've been putting too many miles on that treadmill, but I forgot JJ's red shirt in this year. Get oh, works in practice, but he had a red shirt, so he won't see those any time tonight. We've got uh, Team Gertis, Maggie, Maggie uh, Cole. Polar's favorite players on the floor. Going to see a lot of action now. There you go. Extended minutes with the substantial lead for GCU. Lumbergs brings it up. Leaves for Finky. He wants three. That's short. Yeah, had two players running down the right side. Finky should have cut through because it looked like Gordis was having himself a nice, easy bucket there. Patrick Spear, a junior from Wheeling, Illinois, puts it off the window. I used to live in Wheeling. What? Really? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Northwest suburbs, not too far from where the Bulls used to practice. Yeah. First moved to Chicago in 1990, and that's where Jerry Krause told me I should live. I was like, I spent one year out there and said, uh, yeah, there's nothing going on out here so after 8 o'clock. Oh, I moved, that's why I I moved down to the there. city, baby. Yeah. I was ripping and roaring Chicago. in Chicago with a championship ring on my finger. Rush Street. Great city. The Lodge. Any people out there listening to our broadcast who have not been to Chicago need to get themselves to Chicago. Great it is a city. great, you know, it's a great city, but it's got a town-like feel. Yeah, people it does, have doesn't that it? Midwest yeah. attitudes and it you know, treats you real nice. Geno's. Oh, they got some great food. Oh. Taste of Chicago in the summertime, not to be missed. Gibson's, good spot. That's my spot. That's, That's my all-time favorite spot. Surf and turf at Gibson's, baby. Wow. Great shopping. Great downtown area. Right on the lake. A little chilly there right now. Little Cubs game. Look at that one by Drexel. Team's up 31 points, and he's out there diving six feet across the floor and trying to get an extra possession. He only has one gear. Hard nose. Yeah, he was one of these guys that say, you want to talk about 50-50 balls? Like, you know, a guy that gets 60% of the 50-50 balls? That's Drexel. That's Mark. you got to have guys like that on your squad. Well, it's getting a little chilly down the stretch here. 0 for their last eight. 
Odiasi in the game for Chicago State. Drexel inside the arm. Short. Vinky there. Johnson there. The Johnson comes up with it. Trying to peel away. Herb of the arm. Good work for Carlos Johnson. He would not be denied. Oh, CJ. Working hard to the final buzzer on that offensive blast. Not once. Second time's the charm between three green jerseys and gets it in. Boy, he a little rebel yell. He loves it. Approaching a minute and a half to go. The last 30 points or more victory was against Delaware State by 42 on November 2018. Finky, oh, careful. Almost got his pocket pick there by Jordan Reed. Drexel. Johnson. He'll get that ball to 15 this time down the floor. I'm going to come down on the floor and get him a shot. Leaves it for Blumbergs. Now how about it? You know, this, this guy, I was just informed, has this... Uh, picture on the game program tonight. Oh, so when you get your picture on the game program, you better have a good game. It's like if you have a bobblehead night in oh, yeah. baseball or in basketball, you better play good. Look at Carlos Johnson spoon feeding is big underneath. How many dumps for that is tonight? Seems like every time I look up, he's hanging from the rim. Mike's pulling his knees up for effect, too. I play with a guy named Jake Bosco that was famous for swinging on the rim like that. Well, fans might remember him. The old timers. Here it is. Here it is. Uh, Kick it back out to him. <laughs> well, he got himself three opportunities. He wasn't able to get one tonight. He'll have another chance on Saturday, hopefully. Coach Smarley with a smile on his face, taking this. Uh, Big 36 point victory to the locker room with him. Back out, Witherspoon pulls down, now drives, goes right hand, teardrop it in. Drexel. Across it, bring it back. Oh, give it to Gertis. Let him oh, shoot. Come on, you can't do that. Don't freeze him out. Give it to him. Sportsmanship. Just dribble it out. This time it's Drexel. Seen Milstead do it on occasion. But that'll do it. 80 to 46. Whoops, win it. Well, got, it home. Sorry, got a little sloppy at times, but for the most part, they got the effort and the energy that they wanted, and they'll be happy with this one now, pushing their Western Athletic Conference record to 4 1. Yeah, big one there as they continue to dominate on their home court. Stay with us, post-game press conference. Head coach Dan Marley is forthcoming. We'll check our final stats and much more as the Lopes are victorious. 80 to 46 over Chicago State. Getting ready to trade it in. What are you doing? Just a little shopping. Wait, a new truck. Don't you think I should be involved? Of course. We'll head over to Sanderson Ford as soon as I'm done. I don't have time today. Hope we're going with four doors this time. Ooh, of course. I know exactly what I want. I mean, we want. A lightning blue Ford F-150 Super Crew with EcoBoost. All done. Shop from home, buy from home, we deliver. From the dealer you can trust, Sanderson Ford. Performance is your profession. You excel in bringing the best out of people. Through leadership and insight, you help others fulfill their promise. You share a unique bond with your family and cherish your time together. But you strive to take the next step in your career. GCU's online degree program in performance psychology will enhance your skills in helping others succeed. Master your craft in an online PhD program that puts innovation and technology at the heart of education and you can do it all within a tight schedule without disrupting other aspects of your life. With a PhD in performance psychology, you'll have the tools you need to elevate your performance to the next level.
When human excellence meets cutting edge technology, business advances. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Back at GCU Arena where the Lopes are victorious 80 to 46 over Chicago State in the first of two here on their home court. UMKC coming in on Saturday evening. Very Patel, Scott Williams back here. A 21-2 run there in the opening half after Scott picked up his second personal foul and uh, the Lopes didn't look back after that. No, they were they were wonderful yeah. in that first half. Really shared the basketball uh, nicely tonight. Moving crisp around the perimeter. Their interior passing was fantastic. They got clean looks and they knocked them down. Five players in double figures you have to go back to that Boise State game uh, before the last time that happened. Well, and that's because they shared that ball. The ball didn't stick in anybody's hands. That put a smile on the coaching staff's face. Time now to take a look at our Canyon State Credit Union player of the game. Canyon State Credit Union committed to you. Hey, hey. I love the way Roberts Blumberg came off that bench tonight. So aggressive it earned him a start in the second half. But he made himself a force with his energy. And I love that one right there. Sliding those feet, taking that charge. Getting this one here from Carlos Johnson, getting back in double figures with 10 points. But it just seemed like every time he looked up, oh, Roberts was hanging on that rim. And boy, he had himself a well of a game. Looked like he had himself some fun, too. Big game bomb right there. 10 points, four of six, four rebounds. That's 10 points a season high. Maybe it'll be the turning, uh, turn the corner for. For Roberts it would be it would be nice to have another player that uh, coach Marley could rely on there you, know, you got Jackson with the ribs he's banged up a little bit Finky still working himself back into it as well you put Blumberg's in that mess get Laver going again Oscar Frere yeah. that's a deep team all right let's send it downstairs Kate Longworth is with Lopes insider Paul Cora all right thank you so much and Paul uh, it seems like we keep talking about this but fifth straight game where you've seen four or more players scoring in the double digits. How dangerous can this team be when they're firing on all cylinders? Yeah, it's a big difference from when we were talking about they had to just pound it into Alessandro Labor all the time. He hasn't even been one of them lately. It's been a lot of other guys. Great to see other people get involved, namely Roberts Blumberg's really important for the future to give it a little bit more depth. But now we're seeing consistency out of guys like Damari Milstead as a scoring threat, Carlos Johnson off the bench has done it in five straight games. So really diverse offense now, which is a big difference than a month ago. What did you see from Roberts that he was able to turn it on tonight? He just needed that confidence, and he needed some things to break his way. And, you know, he makes, he makes some plays on defense all the time that don't show up in the box score. And so you look at his stats and kind of roll your eyes about how he's playing. But he's practiced hard. He stayed after practice working. So then some sh things start to break for him in the game, and he made plays on both ends. He took a charge. He was active on defense, got the three points. You know, the first time he got fouled, he couldn't finish. Second time he did. I think that's the kind of stuff that Dan Marley loves to see. Yeah, and in, in sports, a lot of times you'll see with teams playing to their competition. But one thing the Lopes did tonight, they stepped up their game, which I would imagine makes for a happy Dan Marley. But we will just go straight to the source right now to find out. All right. Uh... No, good win. I thought we did some good things, had way too many turnovers. Um, but I thought in the second half we did a better job, um, did what we're supposed to do. And then uh, we're going to have to come in Saturday and play really well against UMKC. So uh, I think Chicago State is a team that uh, that coach is doing a terrific job. He really is. It's the first time he's been there. Uh, runs a lot of really good stuff. And uh, He's going to have that that program pretty good in, 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 in a little bit. He does a good job. So I thought our guys were excited with our crowd back and our students back. It's always fun to play in front of the Havocs. And they were terrific, as always. So uh, happy for Rob. Um, he's worked hard, hasn't got a whole lot of playing time. Uh, took advantage of it tonight and did a good job. Um, so it's happy for him. So uh, we'll take it and we'll move on and get ready for Saturday. He to his success, making him so effective tonight, Blumberg. Just being a little bit stronger, using his size, uh, you know, made his first shot, which was nice. And then, you know, he's a he's an athletic kid, and he, he shows it in practice a lot. Uh, he's just a little uh, timid in games as far as being aggressive. And uh, if he catches around the basket, he's going to finish. And um, he's probably one of our best shooters in practice. He's just got to have the confidence to make it in the game. He's a really a kid that can stretch the floor. So, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm happy for him. He's, he's struggled a little bit the last uh, – year and a half and uh, he's been practicing hard so Ollie had, a, had had an off night and Rob came in and played well so rewarded Rob with a start in the second half and I'm happy for him he's a kid that's worked hard.
How important can he be with his mobility as a big man versus well, the other we gotta get We got to get Ollie playing well. I mean, Ollie's player of the year, you know, preseason pick, first team all whack. So, you know, we got to figure that out, or he's got to figure it out. I think Ollie's in his own head right now. His free throws is, takes a couple bad threes when he doesn't have to. Uh, they are beating the living, you know what, out of him down there. And he's not getting the calls. And some of it's because he flops so much. He's got to just uh, – handle his business down there. He's got to take some of the contact, not flop, play through it, and score. Uh, sometimes he wants to get too much contact and tries to get too, co too close to the basket or tries to bull somebody over instead of using his finesse. So uh, he's struggling right now, but um, it's no secret. We're going to need him if we're going to go where we have to go. So uh, I hope Rob continues to play well and he'll get minutes, but uh, Ollie's still our guy and he's got to play well, um, period. It would have been hard to sustain that like a month ago, but now you've got a lot of different guys scoring and well, we can, you know, we got, you know, we've been able to win some games. You know, Ali didn't play well at New Mexico State, didn't play well at UTRGV, hasn't played well in a while. We got guys that can step up. Uh, you know, we got other bigs and we got uh, guys coming off bench. Jared's played well. You know, Matt's been hurt, but he's a guy that's had big, big games for us. Um, so, yeah, we have, you know, when we started this year, I thought uh, one of our big strengths was our depth, guys that can come off the bench and score. And uh, we've had several guys do that for us. You know, Carlos has been a staple as far as guys coming off and getting some points for us. But uh, I'm not going to lie about it. I'll, we need Ali to play better. So we'll just keep working at it. What are you anticipating with Saturday's matchup? Uh, UMKC, they're, you know, I think they're down right now at half to at Bakersfield. Uh, that's a hard place to play. Uh, they'll be ready for us. Um, they're a team, that, again, that's got some good guards that are smaller, that uh, have some tough guys that they're going to uh, present us with some matchup problems. So um, just have to continue to hopefully uh, play our type of defense and uh, control the basket uh, as far as rebounding uh, and then shoot the ball well. But, uh, you know, playing at home, we got to take care of home business. It's hard enough to win on the road, but UMKC is going to be a great challenge for us. It seems like your ball movement's getting better. 20 assists tonight, a lot of touch passes. And getting like there. That. Got to catch it. Too many fumbles. Uh, but, yeah, we're, we're, we've really been concentrating on moving the ball, uh, not being so stagnant. So we're doing a better job of that, especially against a team that plays zone like uh, Chicago State did. That can be a problem if you're just standing around. So you want to move and cut. And we've been really concentrating on, on practice. So I think it's getting a little bit better that uh, we're just not standing. We're moving the ball, moving bodies, and looking for each other. Is that usually Rafe's zone right there? But. Rafe lost his mind, man. <laughs> I think it went to his head. You know, I, I, I said the other day in practice that Rafe has moved up the ladder. He's now our best shooter on our team. So when he got in the game, he took that first one on the swing with 30 feet. So I guess it was a heat check from practice. So uh, he's got to get back to the drawing board. Good? Thanks, Dan. All right, thanks, guys. Take a look at our final stats. 80 to 46, the Lopes over Chicago State, 51.8% from the field, 7 of 22 from the arc, rebounding margin in favor of the Lopes, assists and bench points. Wow. Strong stuff. Strong off that bench. Of course, a lot of guys got a lot of time tonight as well. Carlos Johnson was wonderful off that bench. Blumberg, star of the game. Let's revisit our Sanderson Ford. Three keys to the game. Disney theme. Yeah, and it, it steal that basketball. You got GCU, uh, uh, 10 steals tonight, forced 23 turnovers were absolutely fantastic. And they banged that ball uh, down low, 38 of their 80 points in the paint. And no, they did not Mickey Mouse around with this oh, team oh, oh. whatsoever. They were all business tonight, went on a 22, 21 to two run, excuse me, in that first half. And that led to a big decisive victory for the Lopes. UMKC, the WAC leaders coming into tonight's action, losing at the half at Bakersfield, New Mexico State, blowing out Seattle at the half, 50 to 24 in Utah Valley with a win here tonight against UTRGV. But this uh, WAC race is going to go down to the wire. Yeah, it's going to be a wacky finish, no doubt about it. And this is a big one on Saturday. All right, let's talk about Saturday. UMKC coming to town. We hope that you make your way down here to GCU Arena. The Lopes will be right here at the House of Havoc as the WAC leading Kansas City Roos come to take on GCU. The Roos led by guard Xavier Bishop, averaging a team leading 15.9 points per game, 4.3 assists. The Lopes pregame show with Kate Longworth starts at 6.30, tip shortly after at 7.00. 
You can watch all the action on your view, Cox Channel 4, or online at GCU.tv. And you can also listen to Michael Potter and Tom Kuyper on the Fanatic 1580 AM, 99.3 FM. But that'll do it from here at GCU Arena tonight. The Lopes victorious over the Chicago State Cougars, 80 to 46. Please join us again Saturday night as the Lopes host UMKC. But until then, for Kate Longwood, Scott Williams, and our entire crew, I'm Barry Beachell. Wishing you a wonderful evening. Oh,